Hey, hey. Hello, buddy. Hello, guys. Hi. You know what today is? Halfway point of our week. Oh, spring. Oh, yeah. Yeah, first day of spring today. Oh. Where's my mind go? It's my wife's birthday. Oh, happy and birthday. And your wife's birthday. birthday. You and say. your birthday's tomorrow. Yeah, my birthday's tomorrow. Oh, 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 oh. Wow. Oh, we're, hey, we're so strike cute. up the band. Da, 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 da. He, 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 he. You guys, we were talking about John Tesh before the show. And... Yeah. We're on a roll. Uh, For good nah, reason. Now nah, I got to play it. I was telling the guys that when I have little breakdowns in my brain where there's silence, the Entertainment Tonight theme song will yeah. play, which you remember. Hell the yeah. kids the kids don't know John Tesh. They don't know John Tesh. You need to show them. You do not know Tesh. Well, John Tesh was, it was Mary Hart and John Tesh Hell on yeah. Entertainment Tonight. But John Tesh is like a, like a... Big time musician. He does a lot of themes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like a lot of theme music. And he did the theme to NBA yeah. on NBC. It's called Round Ball Rock. Here we go. A little John Tesh. Round Ball you. Rock. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Tesh Tuesdays, you guys. What are we going to call this? Hey, Tesh, what are we going to call this? Oh, can you feel it? It's Round Ball Rock. That's John Tesh. <laughs> Playing some basketball. Da, 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 da. <laughs> Round ball. Dribble, dribble, that guy's <laughs> gonna shoot it. That's Running John Tesh. down the court. Kids. <sighs> yeah. Oh, yeah. the breakdown? We need an yes. NBA theme song. Find me the whitest guy possible. Yes. Yeah. He is tall, though. I wonder if John Tesh would record a little jingle for this show. You know, if we just reached out to him, nobody's talking to John Tesh in 2024. I wonder. Are you, know you kidding so? me? What else is it? What is he doing right now? I'm sure he tours. On what? Playing theme NBA songs? songs? Yeah. Talking yeah. entertainment? What is Damn, the, you're the, right. He's 6'6", six, six, dude. I the, never knew that's that. That's what we were looking up before. He was he was doing, it was a live, he had an orchestra, and he runs over to the piano. And bah, oh, bah, yeah. Bah, 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 bah. He's and a he dynamic was doing that performer. Live. And there were yes. 60-year-old is women going, oh, I love this. If John Tesh comes to town, we all have to go. Oh, well, guys, I hate to tell you this, but he's got a. He's in radio. No. <gasps> he's. The man is a renaissance Tesh, man. Tesh is all up in our backyard right now. <laughs> oh, yeah, he does. Nationally like a, syndicated radio yeah. show called the John Tesh Radio Show. Get this guy is here. just creative. I'm telling you, he's Everything a renaissance he does, man. He just, man, the names cool he comes up that? with. Okay. Round Ball Rock, John Tesh Radio. Tesh.com is his web address. Wow. Any tour dates? Uh, St. George, Utah, May 11th. Let's go. John Tesh live. Hey, for real. Typically I airs in adult contemporary Christian and soft rock radio formats. Which makes sense yeah. for George. I'll Utah. bet you wherever that dude goes, he sells out. <sighs> I would oh, go. Sure. He's doing mm -hmm. theaters, right? He's doing. Oh, yeah. Doing, Is John uh, Tesh a poon hound? Let's be real. Whoa. Uh, he's married to somebody. <laughs> he's married to Connie Selica. Boom. What? Your Dang brain that is up. amazing. Look that up. up. They also, need why the Toyota that that up. That's of. legit. <laughs> Look it up. I don't know. I. The man's got a, he's got a strange look. The hair hasn't changed since 87, you know? I don't know, he's been putting Married to? one gospel album out. Oh my gosh, she's Second beautiful. wife is Connie Selica. <laughs> Boom. Julie Wright from 82 to 91. Correct. Wow. What a hound. Guys, John Tesh is a, <laughs> he's a dog, dude. <laughs> <laughs> he's a dog. <laughs> what? Tesh presses flesh. <laughs> Who wants a peek at the Tesh flesh? Hey. John, please. Mary Hart <laughs> said you're not even allowed in her dressing room anymore. Oh, goodness. Did, did she pass? Why, why is this? Connie Selica? No. Well, it doesn't say this on the Wikipedia. But, but Lisa Gibbons <laughs> has got three lawsuits pending. There's a there's a, a video from 21 that says the life and tragic ending of Connie Selica. Oh, like, God. Oh, no. How would you do that? Somebody's Maybe a still career. Living. Yeah, it must be a career thing. Like a um, career thing. She a married John Tesh. Is that putt. the tragic ending? No, Aww. Connie Selleck is well taken care of. You think John Tesh's hair is real? Uh, that is questionable. Damn, she's hot. Dang, they've been married since 92. That's a good-looking woman. Mm. She, she's Wiccan for sure. Oh. Zero percent chance. Look John at that. Tesh Tell me that Christian. she's not in yeah, your, this, your coven. This is my, yeah. <laughs> Connie Selleck <laughs> is, the, lady. is the uh, number one in my You mind. think Tesh outkicked his coverage? No. Mm. He's got a big old chin. And I'm not saying anything wrong with that, but I feel like did she Family Guy? He's got a giant skull in, mm -hmm. in general. He does. He's, he's a big man. Did Family Guy ever do he's cartoon six, six, John though. Tesh? I'm sure. Oh, they have. That's that's what what I mean. There he's, are he's two big, big names when it comes to that kind of music. All like, tall that kind guys. of progressive rock. 
uh, adult contemporary thing. Michael Bolton. It's, no. Oh. It's Yanni. John Tesh and Yanni. Oh, yeah. Those Michael, are the two Michael, names. Michael Bolton freaking Yanni. rips, by the way. I am I know. a fan. I've owned records. I've, I, I I love Michael Bolton. <clears throat> he used to do yeah. Casey Classics with Michael Bolton. It is great. Hey, I'm a John Tesh Well, that's girl. your... This is awesome. John Tesh <laughs> That's your uh, John Tuesday. Tesh update, Sweet. guys. All right. And yeah. this covers my mother's demo. Dude, if, <laughs> if John Tesh was the mystery guest today, how on the... Oh, 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 right, calm oh, down, oh, Tesh oh, Tuesday. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Holy Teshable Tuesday. <laughs> Lauren was, uh, before the show, showing off her new... Um, Oh, my new Driver's idea. license photo. Yes. Thank you well for your done. thoughts and prayers. Everybody yesterday, I said, send a note. You know, I want a good photo because you only get one take. Oh, so they didn't give you uh -uh. a redo? Uh -uh. One shot. One shot. Did you practice it and everything? Oh, yeah. I, I went home wow. after the show yesterday and I uh, curled up my hair a little bit more. Are you serious? Got my face on a little bit is that more. A big, is that a big deal? Hell, yeah, it's a big deal. I'm going to be looking at this thing for years. No, you're not. What? Do you really look at your license? When do you look at your license? Well, every time I get alcohol, I still get carded. But you don't look at it. Wow. I go, you just hand it over. I know, but I'm, I, you happen to see it. I don't want to happen to see ugliness. <laughs> this felt like a big setup to just tell the world that you still get carded for alcohol a little bit. I feel like if you, go, if you go missing, <laughs> if you go missing, there are plenty of other pictures they'll use on the news. Yeah. Other than yeah, your... Yeah, they always find the, the bad ones anyway. Well, what other if I get arrested? Other than your driver's license. Don't they just take the mug shot of your... No. No, they take they your mug, mug shot. shot. Oh. Well, before it's a they separate find photo. you. And yours will probably be I'll good, because it's annoying. <laughs> You'll ask to curl your hair before that was a you... First, that was a first take. Yeah. Well... And I was like, what? I'll share Some it. people are just photogenic, dude. It's like, there's... I was like, everybody else gets their license taken. They look like one of the troll dolls. <laughs> you know, like. Well, when I took mine, the, uh, the lighting's bad. It's like they shoot it from underneath your chin somehow. The woman behind the camera went, uh, it's not good. Okay, yes. I'm like, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> you want to take this, man? That's all right. I don't, I, I, I don't care. I want to get The camera pole here. broke at the DMV I was at, so it was like at waist level. <laughs> the telescopic part. And I was like, you guys are just taking them from there? And she goes, yep. <laughs> <laughs> and so this shot was like from belt buckle up, and I looked like a, a villain in my, for six years on my license. It just like, it was like shooting up under my chin, and I was looking down. It's not good. I look a little older, I'll say. Well, you are a little older. You are older. Oh, I know, but compared to my last one, I look I look a little older. Which, is it every five years you got to get it renewed? Man, I don't remember. I don't know. Mine's... Do now. You're due? I gotta get it. Let's see if I can guess when this Mine she, was she gets hers done every six months, keep her headshots yeah, current. I like to yeah. keep it current. That's smart. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, that's a couple years. <laughs> like, how, oh, how, so how often back. how often do you have you have to get it done? Uh mine expires in twenty seven. <clears throat> oh, I, I, I think it's six years, right? Huh. But the real ID you said wasn't as long, right? Like three years? Yeah, I got the real ID in twenty twenty one. Yeah. And I already had to update it. I, oh, I don't really? know when this one updated. And that could be just because maybe I did it too soon. Because I got soon. the real idea, I got too. The real yeah, ID. I got it, and I have oh, to okay. update this year, All right. which is annoying. Maybe it that was the annoying. first one. I thought this, it was supposed this, to last for a long yeah, time. This, this, this was my real. second one, and it goes till 27. It. And I've had it for a few years. I look weird. Maybe they're getting privy on, like, yeah, we need to see new photos of these mofos, you know? <laughs> they want you to have updated photos. Maybe we had bad photos the first time. They're looking out for it. Every six years, yeah. I got it. Date issued, 8-12-21. Expires. 817 so it's, got a, it's got an issue date on it? Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, ISS at the bottom. Well, congratulations. That was the DMV experience. Smelt like KFC's uh, mashed potatoes and gravy when I walked in there, and I was quite conflicted because it smelled delicious, but then I was like, I'm not at a KFC right now, so... Are you sure it was KFC? It smelled uh, chicken finger licking good or whatever it is. Wait, yeah. what, what did? The, the DMV. DMV. Smell like chicken? Smell like gravy. She said like, she just smells like KFC. Mashed potatoes and gravy. Oh, that's kind of cool. It was kind of cool. Is it though? But is it cool when you don't really know? Like it smells like something, but you're not sure. Why? Why? You don't. <laughs> yeah. Like the dog's paws smells like Fritos, and then mm -hmm. you find out that that's a it's, bad sign. Yeah. That's bacteria. Yeah. Like, well, did you see a KFC bag anywhere? No. Oh. I saw a lot of kids getting their licenses, though. It was so cute. Nah, with I don't their think parents. It was cute. <laughs> With their moms. <laughs> the moms were in full force at the DMV the with their kids. When's the last time you've been in a car with a teenage driver? It ain't very cute. Well, <laughs> last year, actually, my, my nephew turned 16, so he got his license, and I was like, I can't wait to drive her out. Like, it was so cool to have this Yeah, I guess person. it's the next time I'll be gone, my, my son. Go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Same, same. Like in two months. I got nervous, though, because you have to take the 
the little test. You know, you got to look and you got to read the signs and read the letters left to right, and you got to see the periphery of the lights. Mm-hmm. Did you get paranoid? I did, and I I I got through most of it, and. The lady said, okay, do you, where do you see the lights? I go, on my right. She goes, move your hair. Because <laughs> my hair was like kind of crowded in my periphery. And then I saw it on the left, too. She almost uh, didn't give me my license. <laughs> I saw a 95-year-old get one. Oh, really? Here, please press they're giving them. They're just giving them out like, yeah. like candy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Millie. exactly. I'm, I'm telling you, man. They're just tossing them out. One for you, one please, for me. Please one put your you. forehead where your entire community has put their forehead. Everybody, oh, yeah. Uh, they wiped it off each time. Oh, I oh they did? Oh, oh, that's yeah. nice. Yeah. Oh, that's nice. I saw a man who <coughs> appeared to um, be from a different nation. He was getting his license, and that was this woman had such great patience because there was like a lan- language barrier. And so I, I got to give shout out to Ellisville DMV. Like they were just being very patient with people and like helping people out. They did a good job. Yeah. Sweet. They closed the DMV over in Chesterfield. Which the was se- like the uh, secret one? Yeah. <laughs> oh man, I'm sorry. It's gone. I'm so sorry that you're gonna have to deal with that place was humans. never deal with it. The, that place was never full. Like hmm. the rest, never. Of us. Downtown's gone too. We covered that earlier in the year. The one in the in City Hall. Yeah. What the hell's going on? They it's found solid. all the good ones and they're shutting them down. I yeah. asked the lady too. I go, how many licenses do you think you give out in a day? And they said eighty to one hundred a day is how many. See, they just here yep. ten you, an hour. How many morning? should they be giving out a day? Three. That's here. the real question. You yeah. get behind the wheel of this killing machine here. You get behind the wheel of this killing machine here. You did it. <laughs> yeah. That's a problem. Very, very few things I'm this passionate about. <laughs> that's a problem. Yeah, I find when something smells delicious, but you don't see the source of the smell, hmm. I get my, my spidey sense starts tingling. Like, what am I smelling? Mm-hmm. Am I smelling garbage? Does right. the garbage smell good? And <laughs> what does that say about me? Right. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. what does that say yeah. about me? <laughs> yeah. The places I eat at. It's mm. tough, dude. Anytime I go behind a restaurant, you know, you, you know you're, you're smelling dumpster food. But at the same time, you're like, no, it's not. It's kind of if, 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 in between the wafts of trash. When you walk out the back meatball. door here, mm-hmm. when you walk out the back door here, there's a, there's a spot. Oh. I mean, there's a good El Balago's right underneath us, the mm-hmm. Italian restaurant. Right, it's delicious. Great place. There's a spot where the smell of Il Balago ends and the smell of the dumpster begins. Yeah, it's right. hot trash. Yeah. It's it's hot food and hot trash, and they go into this weird brackish air. Uh, it's, it's Vortex. Like, yeah. yeah it's, no, it's, there's one it's right, spot. It's right by the steps, and it's when, and no, where whole, the wind kicks in. Yeah, it's, it's like smell your, your brain just does a 360 real quick. It's like whoa. You, you know like what I'm this? talking? It's right by the stairs where the smell of the dumpster begins. Yeah. And the smell of Vilbalago ends. Yeah, every day. I like Laverne and Shirley every day when I walk out of here. I like when they walk out of the bottling plant. I'm yeah. Like, ah. <laughs> yeah. And you yeah, take a couple skipping. steps and you go, we're going to do it. It's like, where a, it's like where a spring-fed river like, hits, hits the sea. I was... Uh, As 80% raccoon... I'm aroused. <laughs> you know, it's yeah. funny. It's we got to hold you, you back when I walk out. Yeah, when I walk out, I have to have an escort to keep me out of that. No, 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 no. No, right. Go to your car. Funny you say that. We've been in here since 2018 in this studio, and I still have yet to see any animals back there. And I think about it all the time. I'm like, I'm like, I've never seen a raccoon back here. I've never seen any, anything messing with this trash ever. Hmm. Not once. Have you? Yeah, no, no. Even you know, I get there, you know, get here at 3 30. That's what I'm saying. I don't, I don't in there. I'm just, uh, I think they are in there. They, I mean, there was a, like, a, down at the Union Station, remember, like, we would yeah. park in that weird place uh, underneath the bridges, and there was weird dumpsters, and that wasn't even, like, food dumpsters. And I saw animals in there every morning, all every day. Hmm. And I haven't seen a single animal here. I bet you they're in there. They just... They're quiet? I think they're quiet. They're uh, Creve Corps. That's true. <laughs> Raccoons. A little more elegant. Yeah. 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 Right. <laughs> Classier. Yeah. They state of themselves a bit more. I was uh, cleaning out my car over the weekend, and, uh, you know... Springtime, spring cleaning. Good for you. New beginnings. I just cleaning out the clutter. And I found several koozies in my car. And I was thinking, does anybody actually when was the last time anybody actually anybody actually bought a koozie? Oh, yeah, those oh. are those are promo materials. Never. 100% promo materials, oh, no, right? No, no, no. Mm-hmm. I have one. It's so funny you say this because I just cleaned out. We have a a, a whole basket because we had that bar downstairs, you know, uh, by by the pool. And when we would have people over, we'd have, I mean, a thousand koozies, and I would oh, we would yeah. always keep all the promo ones. We get tons of promo ones here. We donated over two hundred koozies to uh, to Goodwill. I don't. Know, they probably just trashed them. Probably. But we put it in there, and and the reason that I know that I bought one before is because 
we had to pick and choose which ones we wanted to save. And I saved the one that I bought was at a canoe place down <laughs> yes. in central Missouri. I hope it's the same thing I have. Yeah, it's it's got like a rope around it. Yeah. And, I, well, and you carry it around you hold it oh, around yeah. your neck. The you know floating. what I'm talking about? Oh, yeah. It's yeah. like JP's canoes or something. Yeah. It's got a strap. I bought that for sure. I feel like if you know when you go to a home show or a boat show, every booth is passing out koozies mm -hmm. with the company logo on them. I have so I found like four or five in the car, and then I go, I go, I bring them into the house, and I go, holy hell, I got these things everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. Oh, I, I'm telling you, over, we we gave away o over 200, and we kept a few. I have a stack in one of my kitchen cabinets. I have a big stack at the bar. I got five or six in the garage. I found four or five in the Jeep. It's insane. So who is still buying koozies? <laughs> I don't know. I don't need any more, though. It's overkill. I feel like like, uh, like the Tribbles from uh, yeah, Star Trek. They just, they just coming, multiply. They're coming in from the vents. Yeah. <laughs> like they just multiply. But What's I'm, a new but promo I, item that we could be given at? Like, T-shirts and koozies have run their course, I feel like. I, so. I don't need any more of either. But what else can you do? Sunglasses? Those no, I feel like, I, you know, every time I get one, I feel like it's appreciated. Mm. Yeah, I get stoked. I go, oh, that's kind of right, cool. cool man. I'll use that. I, it's just clutter. Mm -hmm. I can't wait till July 4th. We were giving them out for, for my birthday. Yeah. Oh, Remember yeah. those? I didn't take one. I got like 50 of those on my desk. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't take one? Uh-uh. Oh, that's... I got too many. But I'm the idiot that has... Yeah, but it's got my name on it. Oh, well, I look at you every day, so... Uh, I'm, I'm a okay. guy that has 200 of them at home. I go on a float trip, and I forget. And then yeah, gotta, and you get and more. I gotta go buy one at the at the tackle shop. Yeah, the Ozark Riverfront Outdoors Floating Company. They that's where I bought that one. That holds over your neck, so your, yeah, your beverage doesn't sink. It's the best. It is the mm -hmm. best. But you bought it. Yeah, I bought it. And it has a really funny slogan on it or something. Right. Yeah. But I also feel like I can't throw them out. <laughs> mm. You're a pack rat. I feel like you got only a bit certain of that. things. I didn't want to throw it away. I, that's why I donated it. You get sentimental about stuff, and you feel like you can't let it go. Yeah, promo items. <laughs> That's what you're sentimental yeah. about. <laughs> Certain ones, though, like T-shirts I could toss. Uh, I don't know. I feel like I need to keep the koozies. Mm. I get it. <clears throat> it was hard. I feel like I need to keep the... And I bet you Goodwill threw them right in the garbage. You think so? Ah, oh, cool. More koozies. All right. <laughs> That's all well, they're getting right now. Awesome. I wonder That's, if you could cut up the all of the koozies you have. Because I did this... My mom made me a shirt quilt for all my old band shirts from way back in the day. And I wonder if you could cut up koozies and make them into a raft. You know what I'm saying? Huh. Like, you know, quilt I'm, them together. Rachel, good point here. You know what the promo item should be? What? Chip clips. Yes. That is something I Dude. always need. Great idea. Chip clips. I'm down. I like that. Yeah. I Rafe. Like that. Chip clips. <laughs> okay, yeah. <laughs> get on it. All right, man. <laughs> yes. I'll, I'll. Let's get a groundswell for chip clips going. Because that's the one thing I never have enough of at my house. I got we, a lot of still chips. And we bought them. But we lose them. That's like actually a good idea for, because like, I feel like every comedian sells, you know, because comics are on the road, but barely making money. So everyone's got to like take merch. You also, yeah. have to, you also have to be a carnival worker after your show. And everybody's koozies are like easy. They're easy to haul. They're cheap to make. People are like, all right, I'll give you five bucks for your little koozie. And I'm sure yeah, they, they're they light. probably just get, to exactly, they get tossed in the back of the car where you found yours, mm -hmm. never to see the light of day again. But you get a chip clip, you might be on people's minds. Every time they open up their Doritos, they see Rafe Williams comedy. Who knows? Yeah, Rafe Williams. That might Williams be a bad merch idea, dude. Mm -hmm. You might be on to something. I'm always like, what should I? Because you don't want something. T-shirts are fine, like when you're in a band or whatever, to do for merch. But it's just such a haul. If you're doing it yourself, yeah. you don't have, like, merch people. Mm -hmm. And then you got to look through them and be like, what size are you? Oh, I'm sorry, I don't have that. Chip clips, man. Chip clips. Magnets One size fits too. all, dude. Yeah, I have magnets. Oh, you know what? I got my Reba magnets. So I'm, I'm looking at the, uh, the uh, one of these companies that you can do this. I, well, I do get these for promo items. We we do have. Well, you've seen these. What about on the screen? Look, look, look. Yeah, because. Uh, yeah, I've, I've got. Oh, I yeah. think I got one from my <clears throat> realtor. I yeah, when I, I got my house, oh. first community gave me. You know what? Four yeah. or five of those. This I don't think one? I knew what they were. Yeah, they're chip clips. Yeah, that's not a chip clip. Oh, yeah, they're yeah, all chip clips. Yeah, that's that? chip clip. that is yeah. a chip clip. There's oh, new man. technology. Chip, in chip clips have clips. to be long. Like, no, yeah. they don't have to be. Dude, well, oh. They should be. Look, look there's, around. There's kind of lock now. There's all kinds of. Look around. Things. I bet you. Well, look in Scott's office. I thought this was like a binder <laughs> clip for the office. No, we know what his office looks like. I guarantee you, there's six of these in in Scott's office right now. So, somewhere. 
Kuzi, I'll throw, on the, clip. Kuzi I'll throw in the car and forget Scroll about it. Scroll down to the clip. ones that look right. Hey, what about the footballs? You know what I'm saying? I like nah, the those, those, oh, I like the dog gets a hold of those. Mm. Those are over. <laughs> chip clip, man. Yeah, those get clip. in the house and they go in the cabinet and we're using those. Maybe we could do a learn stress ball, you know? It's my cartoon face and you just squeeze it. <laughs> this one has teeth. Mm. That'd be cool. <laughs> Not a bad idea. <laughs> I see like, the, uh, see the ones with teeth? That's a good idea. Rafe, sell this and just put yeah. Rafe Yeah, with on teeth. It. Yeah. It's like a smile. Like a laugh. Yeah, Laughing. That's a good idea. Comedy. People would buy it. <clears throat> there was one, the best comedian merch I ever saw was Kelsey Cook because she had to joke about what guys' balls smell like. And she went and got... Air freshener. Air fresheners, but the air freshener, instead of saying pumpkin spice, had all the jokes of what guys' smelly balls were like. But they smelled good, and she had them, and they... And with it was like a she sold out at the cartoon first show. testicles, kind of nice. Hmm. Yeah, to go along with the act, that's funny. Yeah, killed it. Let's and I'm see. like, man, she's she was making more money on the on the air fresheners than she was as a middle act. I'm telling you, Rafe. Well, we're we're in Missouri. Let's, let's do a run. Of, let's do a run of chip clips. Chip clip. We're in Missouri. Let's do chip clips and uh, truck nuts. We'll do Riz Show truck oh, yeah, nuts. Dude. Oh, yeah. Yes. And T will sell plenty of those. You guys can make a mold Waste. of your balls, <laughs> and then you could pick which truck nuts you Waste. like for your yes. truck. We'll have a, a nut competition. And then I'll make some honkers, and you put those on the front. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Car boobs? Car boobs. <laughs> honkers. Let's go. Uh, are, are, there so, are there car boobs? Let me there is now. Are there truck the nuts? Mud flaps. Mud. <laughs> no. <laughs> the Ray William mud flap. Hey. No. No, I'm not clicking those. Truck nuts and car boobs. Uh, yeah, I'm not. There's car boobs. I've seen them. Have you? Yeah. What do you mean? Like a bra? Like you on see the, the car bra? I had, there was like, there's car boobs. Hmm. Oh, I've never seen those. On the front? Hey. What happened to a good car bra? You know what I'm saying? Well, I'm talking oh, about. Oh, yeah. Come yeah. On. I need a car a nice reef. I, I, car need, I need a They're Ford. They're still around, I need dude. a Ford probe with a car bra. Chicago still has them because everyone, the parking's so yeah, tight. Yeah, the parking situation. <laughs> it's just a way to protect the car. But yeah. then, but then. And then the headlights don't sag when they get older. But yeah. Because <laughs> <Right. laughs> you're taking but care you, of it. Then you find yourself buying a car that you're okay putting a car bra on. And if I'm buying a car that I'm okay putting a car bra on, do I really need a car bra? I never I mean, understood it, those. It's, it's like, just a soft top for the front. But it. You drove uh, a Jeep, uh, dog. But yeah, it, but what? But it's a bra you take, thing, man. You wouldn't understand. But find me a car. I mean, other than this, like it's, the there challenge. I never like, understood kind of those. Thing going on. What? Yeah. What were the point of those? Because when you bump people, with parallel parking keep you from scratching and dent in the front of your. Yeah, front. but I saw those in the suburbs. <laughs> exactly. I, I don't know, man. That's what they're for. Hmm. <clears throat> It also keeps, like, bugs, I would imagine. No, I understand in New York City, you see them all yeah. the time, unless, unless but in you, the suburbs. Unless you find yourself in a pattern of following gravel trucks. I'm not I'm not 100% sure. Yeah. Yeah. You, don't yeah. see, you don't see them on luxury cars, right? That's it was the car bra for the front, car. and they had it almost looked like a, like a mat in the back. Uh-huh. <laughs> like a rubber mat in the back, so when you back yeah. it into a spot. Huh. Yeah, like, here's a Mercedes with a car bra. I mean, how stupid does this look? Yeah. JR says, free the bumper. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> hell, hell yeah. Hey, um, for the I know I know King Scott and Moon on the regular go to church. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um Scott just played. Yeah. On, on yeah, and, and just got me thinking. We 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 drove by the your family church on Sunday. A parking lot was always is always packed on Sundays. Yeah. Always packed. I think I pointed out to the kids. I'm like, oh, it's uh, you know, King Scott is probably playing in the band there today. But do people actually still wear their Sunday best to church? Depends on the church. Um, yeah, I, I mean, there's, there's a variety. I mean, you see, you see people in t-shirt and jeans, but you see people in suits. There's, there's I mean, yeah. my, my father every every week wears a suit. Yeah, but I remember as a kid when we used to go to church, like it was, you, got, you kind of got to get dressed up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like you got to put a, a button-up shirt on. You got to wear slacks. It's you know, definitely it's more casual now. We, we don't tell the kids. Anything as far as like uh, dress code, and even the ten-year-old actually, this happened uh, last month. The ten-year-old said, "Hey, mom, uh, I need a I need a shirt with a collar on it." And she was like, "Really?" He goes, "Yeah, I want to I want like a nice shirt for for church." He said that. Like hmm. we we've never hmm. said anything ever about Sunday best or any of that. All right, he, aside from your family, he's though, like I want to I want to look nicer. Looking around, do people still wear? I mean, everybody heard the term Sunday best, mm -hmm. but on your Sunday best, mm -hmm. or is pretty much everything fair game now? 
Everything's fair game, especially on Super Bowl Sunday, because church was packed with Chiefs sweatshirts. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> and and was this past Sunday, there was I, a lot of green. Everywhere. You know, when I went to church as a kid, you would never dare. No, not in my church. You would church. never dare. No. It just depends on the church, too. Yeah. yeah a lot of churches, you know, things change as culture changes to keep the, keep the stands packed. Yes. Pe- keep people in the pews. Yeah. You got to mm-hmm. keep asses in the pews. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? It's all about... Keeping the congregation strong. So I feel like churches have, like, as the same thing. Like, you used to wear a suit on an airplane, too. Now you're wearing Crocs and sweatpants. So church is like, we got to get in on this Crocs and sweatpants worship. Look at all those old movie reels from uh, baseball like. games. Baseball games back in the 30s and yeah. 40s. You know, guys wearing top you know, hats. Top and hats. And yeah. Looking good. Let me check your looking fedora. Looking sharp. And I personally would, if I were to attend a church, I would want to attend a church that, that relaxed is, yeah because some people can't afford that kind of stuff i mean like you're supposed to be preaching to the masses and and everyone's welcome under the tent so like let everyone feel welcome under that tent don't make them feel less than because they didn't <clears throat> they don't have the same suit i felt like a lot of times church was away in when i was a kid <clears throat> there was a lot of like judgment and how you dressed hmm. Hmm. i don't know i always thought it was like a respect yeah. thing Maybe. House yeah. of the Lord. I feel like the only people that cared were, like, the church elders. Uh, the ladies in their big hats and uh, dresses judging people. I think I asked my dad one time, and he, he for for him, it was like, a, hey, I want to I wanna present myself in this, in this way for me and his relationship with God and what he's there for. You know what I mean? It had, really had nothing to do with anybody else. I, yeah. I, I, I know my dad doesn't care what anybody else is wearing. But for him, it was like a— I think some people did, though. Oh yeah, yeah, sure. But I mean, that's that's going to happen in church. It's going to happen in the airport. It's going to happen in school. Hundred yeah. that, that, like, percent. I'm not. That's a universal yeah. law. All right, hey, for those of you who go to Catholic church, let me know. Do people still really get dressed up or have the have the dress codes relaxed? Hmm. Okay, so I'm gonna I'll give you a, a clothing item. You tell me if it's acceptable for church or not. Crocs. <laughs> At family church, yes. sure, man. Yeah, if we're in Missouri, that's all right. Uggs. Yes. A football jersey. I, I told you, man. Hell yeah. Super Bowl Sunday was packed. with. It was like, it, look, it looked like a Chiefs rally in there. Ripped jeans. Mm-hmm. I, I seen to. Well, yeah. I mean, I see a preacher every Saturday night in ripped jeans I on it. TV. Yeah. I was, I, he's I, crushing. Dude. Who? That pester, uh, what's the guy's name? He's got frosted tips. There's a couple of them. Uh, Is he from here? In real town? corny guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Real corny mega church prosperity yeah. gospel guy. Uh, nice. David um, Crank. Does that Bill, sound the, right? Did you tell about the billboard guy? One of the oh, billboard yeah. guys. His yeah, wife's I a know. pastor too. She's know, hot. They're wearing like eight thousand dollars worth of designer like Ed Hardy stuff. Dude, I know, he's wearing Ed Hardy. Oh, dude. Oh, he's <laughs> it's pull so, up, pull it's up. Pastor David Crank. It's so funny you say that because uh, and he's doing corny stuff. He's like, when that, when, listen, guys. <laughs> He's got like that relatable uncle energy. He's a good speaker. I'll give him that. Like sometimes I'll watch him laugh on a Saturday night because he'll be like, like, "He's a chef." Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, I've seen his billboard. Look at this guy. Heck you know yeah. You know what's funny is there is a uh, there's an Instagram. He's preaching in jeans, cool designer jeans. Oh, he's a fa- faith church guy. Yeah. Look yeah, at yeah, that. yeah. Okay. That's a yeah. Let me show you this. Uh, Frosted tips. <laughs> oh yeah, dude. <laughs> cool. Yeah, but ripped jeans though. But they they come ripped. Like you cool bought guy. them ripped. Yeah. But I mean, they're ripped, nonetheless. Yeah, no. mm-hmm. And he'll be doing like he's like, you know, when I first started dating Nicole, we didn't have any money. I drove a Dodge Neon. You know why they call it Dodge Neon? Because you got a knee on the door and a knee on the dash. Am I right? And the whole congregation like, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just like, this guy is a cornball, dude. And he's crushing right now, crushing. Like Morning those ripped jeans are probably two of my car payments. <laughs> oh no, that's what I'm saying. Like he's in, he's in about ten thousand dollars worth of. Clothing made dripping, to look casual. Dripping with Ed Hardy. He's dripping with casual clothes that cost a lot of money. Uh, at, all right. Look at this. There's, there's these uh, Preachers and Sneakers is a uh, is an Instagram account that I follow that's one. really funny. Louis Vuitton. And it just shows these preachers. And, it, and, it, and all it does is it, it, just, it just goes from their shirt to their to their pants to their shoes. And it shows you the price of everything that they're wearing. And some of these guys are up there in eight grand worth of stuff every morning. <clears throat> yeah, dude. I was telling you, yeah, man, I found a, there was a store in Denver that had these, like, custom Air Force Ones that almost had, like, uh, 
Doc Martin soles. They mm -hmm. were cool, dude. But man, they were like thousand bucks a pop. Like those. Yeah, which is, oh, which is the, interesting. That's one of the, the preachers that has those. Oh, yeah. Right. Man. It, and it's, it's just showing, like, you know, some of the... Uh, hey, they move around a lot. you got to be comfortable. Yeah, well, yeah. I get it. I get it. <laughs> uh, are jorts acceptable at church? Everything, yeah, jorts. Yeah. Jorts are? <laughs> Look at that guy. That guy's amazing. Oh, that's the Faith Church guy. Oh, oh yeah. He, no made the preachers, made he made preachers <laughs> he made with sneakers. Yeah, He's wearing a sweatshirt. Well, it's a hundred fifty eight dollar sweatshirt. Two hundred seventy five. Oh yeah. But it is. might have been on sale for two hundred. Flip flops, are those acceptable? I guess everything is. A bikini, is that acceptable? Uh, well, depends on how, no. what the person looks like. Yeah. Because <laughs> if you're gonna make people lust, <laughs> if you're gonna make people Dep lust, uh, it's depend, not a good idea. Depend, but... It depends if you have the body for it or not. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. basically what you said. So. Well, no, no, I'm saying Jesus if it's said, gonna make people quote. lust, it's a terrible idea. But if you people are just gonna be kind of grossed out, it's okay. Yeah. Those right. are some. You guys seen those billboards? Which They're, ones? They need to fix those billboards. They'll be like shackled by lust. Jesus can help. And I'm like, hold on, make that message clearer. Because it's just like a billboard that says shackled by lust, and it's like fire and hearts. What kind of lust are we talking about? Yeah, but then it doesn't say in which way. Right. Well, it makes it seem like Jesus is going to like kiss on your neck or something. Like They need to figure uh, that right. out. Maybe they're talking about porn, but they can't. They don't want to put the word porn. Or that, they are, I think. It's just like so vague. That it yeah, could, it's, it could be anything. It could be anything. They need to like be a little more, they need to hone in the message a little bit. Are Hawaiian shirts acceptable at church? Yes. Yeah, very much. Definitely. I pulled that Hawaii. one time or two. He's got a collar, man. Collar and buttons. Look at me. I'm fancy. Yeah. Yoga I'm, pants? I'm fancy and fun. Yoga pants, I guess, Scott, it depends on the body, right? Yeah, yeah. Again, yeah, if I you're going to make people lust, <laughs> you're not wearing I got it. <laughs> Somebody said he's Pastor Guy Fieri. And I was like, that's exactly <laughs> who That's the church I'd go to. That's exactly who that guy is. Dude, he's I had the Flavortown Church? That's the Flavortown yeah. Church, dude. <laughs> I had a job. He should change Faith Church to Flavortown Church. He would double. Speaking of the Hawaiian shirts, I, I worked at Merritt's, you know, down there. And uh, I was um, in the mail services, M-A-I-L, mm -hmm. not M-A-L-E. Yeah. And uh, although they probably offer that, too. And the dress code, you know, I had to go around and, like, deliver everybody's packages. So I had to, like, memorize everybody, every single desk, every office, everything. So everyone would see me. And, they're like, they're, they're like, we have a strict dress code. You have to have khakis. You have to wear nice shoes. And you have to have a collared shirt. And I was like, okay, is that it? Is that, is that what you got? Like, and they said, yeah, khakis has to be a collared shirt. And I said, okay, any type of collared shirt. And they said, as long as it has a collar, you're clear. You're good. I went out and I bought every, like, $6 Hawaiian shirt that I could find. And I was, not, I was the Hawaiian shirt guy. Yeah. They couldn't say nothing. They're like, hey, you're kind of, like, taking advantage of this. And I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Is it okay? And they said, man, I guess so until we get some complaints. Who's going to complain about a Hawaiian shirt? Yeah. Nobody. Nobody. Everybody loved me, dude. Everywhere everywhere I went, people were like, oh, here he is. Here's my mail. Was? It merits. When I yeah, which is a vacation in, place, right? If somebody walks them, into yeah. a room wearing a Hawaiian shirt, every day I, I, it lights <laughs> up the room. Time. I yeah. had fifteen of the cheapest Hawaiian shirts I could find. It was the greatest. At Emmis, we used to have Hawaiian shirt Thursday or whatever. I own yeah. two Hawaiian shirts. Got to have fun with. The I gig. have a whole bunch, and I think that started when I was a child because of Weird Al. I'd yeah. see him, and I'm like, I gotta get that. I think I'm, I'm just gonna surprise you guys. Just come in with it on one day. I'll say this: you never see anyone in a Hawaiian shirt asking for a manager. No, no good point. Ever. I You're look at a Hawaiian a good shirt out. Too. You're, you never see a Hawaiian shirt walking through and be like, this this guy's going to be a problem. No, had, he's not going to be a problem. <laughs> I, had, dude, I had a big fro with a, with a bleached tip, so I looked like Otto from The Simpsons. And I, and I had a Hawaiian shirt and baggy khaki pants. And I, I was a vibe, man. It was, I was a vibe, man. It was awesome. <laughs> I was bringing that to the office. It, well, man. my Hawaiian shirts are part of my hey. uh, cabana wear collection. I was a vibe. Man. I really was. I was here to, you know. Make make it fun. I was trying what to make it fun. a positive self-view. And I was trying to make it fun. It's tight. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe, I, I just thought about it because maybe the Catholic church that I went to as a kid, again, and, and, and when we used to go to church, you know, my mom would make sure that we are all dressed up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Catholic, you say? Catholic. Mm. I don't know anything about Catholic, but I, I, I would assume the dress code is... Pretty prob strict. Pr yeah, probably going to last Shoot, there No last. sneakers. No sneakers? No Whoa. sneakers. I didn't even have any dress shoes. Oh, yeah, you had, you had your Sunday best. That was the thing. You had dress shoes as a kid? Oh, yeah. Oh, I had one pair of shoes until there were holes, and then it was the next no, pair No, I of had shoes. sneakers, and then my, uh, you know, going my dress shoes. 
for wow. fancy occasions. Yeah. No, we didn't have that kind we of... We always... I get to go to the fancy place to buy mine. We didn't it's called that, Walmart. We didn't have that kind of grip. I go to Buster Brown's. Get your, uh... Get your fancy shoes. Mm -hmm. uh, anybody here been a hot air ballooning? No. Always... I think I've mentioned this before that I never want to do it. I kind of do. I yeah. really want to show hot air balloon. I really wanted to until I saw one crash in front of my eyes. And I was like, well, I, I, that's it for me. But it had yeah. to be the softest landing of all time. Uh, another... They hit a church roof and then slid down and slammed in the parking lot. Every once in a while, right you see a story and, and somebody's got it on video of a, of a hot air balloon, you know, hitting a power line. Yeah, but, but for every one of those, there's a million that are fine. That are fine. And we go to the balloon glows every year. We love no, it. No, they're cool. And every I time mean, I see cool one go up, at I night go, oh. when they, you know, when they put the burners on and, oh. I want to do it. Oh. It's cool, you know, when they do the, the balloon race here in St. Louis, mm -hmm. that whatever Saturday it is, you look up and there's, you know, 50 hot air balloons. Yeah. Cool looking. Yeah. You can't really steer those things. Here's what I want to do. I want to ride in, in a hot air balloon. I just don't want to land. So, if I ever get the balls to uh, parachute, I'm going to try to do two in one. Can you do that? Can you go up on a balloon and, yeah. then, and then skydive? Yeah. yeah. Dude, oh, a, yeah, they that's do that. That's the way. The, then, then, boom. On my checklist is fine. I don't have well, to Well, I don't think you go high enough to, to skydive. You can. You can. You can. There's a video I just saw the other day of, like, it's that uh, main character syndrome or whatever. Like, a guy goes up. This guy's just riding on, like, a hot air balloon ride. He goes up, takes his jacket off, and he's got a parachute on. And the guy grabs him. He's like, you're not, I'm not letting, no. And oh, so he didn't tell the. Oh. He got in a fight with a hot air balloon guy, and he's like, get your hands off me. And he's like, dude, no, this, you're going to ruin my business. You're not the star of this movie. You're not, he's like calling him out, and he's like, no, I'll lose my life. You're yeah. jeopardizing my business. Like, no, right, we're not, yeah, yeah. we have to have a permit to do this. And the guy's like, I'm going to go. It's not on you. I'm on video. I'm taking full responsibility, and the guy's like, "No, you're an a-hole. No, I'm he's not." The camera and he going. holds on to him, and they like he, they're like struggling, and the guy's like letting the air out of the balloon to get him down. Turn on the camera, go smash that like button. Well, yeah, and the crying. guy's like the well, guy, and the guy like put it on, uh, thinking that everyone's going to take his side. Yeah, and it's one of those. And everyone's like, "No, you're you're a, a dick. jerk, dude. You're an a-hole." So he got him down. He didn't get him. He couldn't get out of the basket. The guy would not let go. The guy was Good. Like one Good arm on him. him, one arm on the thing. And he's like, oh, yeah, there was guys. one I saw recently. Yeah, yeah, it was crazy. Uh, Cold air. Were, I guess you go up and you bungee jump. Mm -hmm. Oh, off the off, off the, the thing? So, yeah, so you hot air balloon up to a certain height, and then yeah. you bungee jump, and the rope snapped. Don't. Don't do that. And? What, what do you mean? Well, no. Uh, and the balloon make it. floated uh, away. For real? Man. Uh, yes, no, sir. this one, I saw a story yesterday. A man dies after falling out of the basket in, in Australia. The guy fell 1,500 feet. Well, say, so, okay, okay, so um, I'm going 25 miles an hour over here, and it's a loft for me to be strapped in. I'm 10,000 feet in a balloon. Have you no harness? Are you, are you not, I mean, have tethered you know, in? You know I, mean, what, I mean, you know. Yeah, you're not tethered in? I have no idea. It doesn't even have to be a long tether. I'm not going far. The You know, uh, prevent me from falling. Prevent me from going six feet out of this basket. Shouldn't there be like just even even if it's just a belt and like a little whoop, yeah, little carabiner? They said well, there's this guy, a giant thing of earth below it that'll catch you. They said this guy was uh, it was in the, the the hot air balloon was in the air for thirty minutes. They're not sure what happened yet, but the guy fell out of the basket fifteen hundred feet. He fell into a residential neighborhood. Oh my god! Golly. Are there no standards for that? Are there, I've never seen any, like, harnesses uh, or seatbelts. And this happened to show you. The National Commercial Hot Air Balloon Industry and the Australian Ballooning Federation issued a statement. They said, hot air balloon baskets are designed with safety in mind specifically to prevent passengers from falling out accidentally or from any accidental exit. So that tells me that, yes, you are. Maybe you got, like, a carabiner on. Uh, no. The first no. hot air balloon was in 1783 and i don't think they've adjusted it at yeah. all so let's not let's not well there's only so much precaution. technology there is for basket and balloon and fire yes I, shouldn't there be a standard a little basket belt hot air balloon does seem like the mode of transportation for like a a, a rich kid in 1781 <laughs> yes, it does. mother i want to gaze upon the foliage from on high okay <laughs> like all right <laughs> All right, Nathaniel. Yeah, that's pretty sick. That was like the kid, rich kid's go-kart from like 1781.
That would be sweet. Think about the kid in you, though, like just floating up into into the air. I, I wonder mean, if they have. Got, it's got to be the coolest thing ever. Nah. Um, uh, uh, like a bag that pops out or something. If they have any of those where you hit the ground and it, you know, inflates something and you have a cushion of some sort. What are you talking about? Like kind so, of, if the thing falls out of the sky, it's yeah. like an airbag. Yeah, kind of like they do for motorcycles now. And oh, all an that. airbag on the basket. You mean? Yeah. Oh, if something happens with the basket. Just wear a windsuit. How about you just don't go up sugar glider one. flaps, you the, know? The squirrel yes. suit. Oh, oh, I got yeah. a buddy that's on one Ace of those jump. teams that, yeah. that does that professionally. Yeah. And, and then just land on a tree. I would love to do that. Crazy. I'd love to squirrel it out of a plane. Dude, he's a guitar he's player. So touring. He, he skydived once and was like, I, I love this. Did it a half a dozen times. Got a license and within like a year was addicted. And and does the squirrel suit thing? Does the squirrel suit thing yeah. and, uh, and is on a team, like a professional team that does whatever you do when you're a professional squirrel nah. flyer. Like, yeah. If I can get Hubbard to make a Riz blimp, you guys going up? Heck yeah. Whatever. A blimp? Riz blimp, dude. We'll fly it over uh, can I pilot it? Cardinals games. That's different. That's got a motor. That's good. You know, yeah, you I'd could, go on a blimp ride. That's a desired All landing. Right. Hmm. I, I would do a blimp ride. All right. like, if the good, like if we had a chance to do like the Goodyear blimp, I would do it. Why does that seem safer to you? That's just you're inside. But there's a steering wheel. Yeah. And who do we have broadcasting there's from below? Wheel. I feel like uh, <laughs> you know, you're enclosed. There's more safety measures. Okay. I don't know. <laughs> right. I want. I would like a tether and a parachute there. Yeah. The hot air balloon. I feel like it's just, just a closed basket, wrong. dude. That's all it is. <laughs> yep. You're just in a closed I, basket. I, I still need, want to shoot on. I'm gonna need a cyanide capsule, a flyer, <laughs> a squirrel suit, and a backpack that has parachute. What is it? I require. Yeah. What is it? To go up in a blimp. I, I, yeah. well, it's not hydrogen. It's not hydrogen. <laughs> the humanity. That thing goes down. It was crushed. That pill. I'm out. You know. What's the point of the other two things that? I don't know. So my body looks good when it lands. <laughs> you don't hear about you don't my hear about blimp body. crashes. So everyone, I can look hot at my funeral. So I can have an open casket. <laughs> they can take my last driver's license picture in my casket, and it'll yep. still look good. <laughs> I say, who's gonna I'm be I'm an organ donor, dude. I want to make sure those organs stay fresh. Oh well, that's very what? thoughtful of you. Wait, cyanide, you cyanide coated <laughs> organs will really come in handy for all the people. Yeah, I, I think the cyanide would actually. I got that's right. All right. I retract it. <laughs> we got a liver for you here. It's steeped in poison. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I retract my I'll take previous it. statement. I want to keep drinking. <laughs> yeah, this lady bit a cyanide tooth halfway down. Uh, hey, Rafe, listen, we can bump you up to the top of the list for the for the liver transplant. Liver transplant. Lauren actually left it to you in her will. <laughs> but, I did. But it but is it's soaked in cyanide. Soaked in cyanide. <laughs> <laughs> cyanide, my, the the cyanide and tequila. And it's miniature, by the way. <laughs> it's, it's not going to do much for you. <laughs> what if I got one of her organs and I just... You guys came to my house. I had like eight thousand cats. Yeah, like, oh, I Lord. just felt the need to. She's in you. <laughs> hey, when's the last time? Felt seen, the so, need to collect cats. When's the last time you seen a blimp? I, 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 when, when I was a kid, I feel like we saw them every every. Uh, if every there's a major months. sporting Cardinals. event, yeah, Cardinals game. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, it'll uh, like it's, what? Other than racing. Uh, racing is where I feel like MetLife used yeah. to be floating over. No, no, no. When I have think, you seen one? I think the last time, like the NASCAR race. Uh, over like yeah, worldwide the, technology. Yeah, the, the, was it, it was Goodyear? a flight path over Wildwood. It was like oh. Arrowhead. Because oh, okay. Goodyear has well, yeah, or on their way. Three like we're like a Passover. Yeah, we are. Cause, oh yeah. Because when I was a kid, granted, I probably spent a lot more time outside when I was a kid than I do now. But like, I, I feel like every couple of months, I'd look up and go, "Oh, cool, a blimp." You know, that's sweet. It was like a, you know, yeah. it was like yeah. finding something. I feel like if we got a Riz blimp, we'd get to, like, the big event and would be able to find parking, and Riz would make us turn it around right. and uh-huh. go back to the airport. Turn around. <laughs> turn no. out. Indiana Jones style. We're turning around. <laughs> yeah, I always liked out in L.A., there's, if you're just down south a little bit, there's the home for the Goodyear blimp there. They have one of them stationed out there, so you always see it when you're driving on the highway, and it's just so fun. I'm like, man, I want to go on that. Yeah, I, I don't know where they're all stationed, but whenever they make their way... I think they're there. I, I I feel like there's one nearby. Nearby. Because we get them in Cardinal games and and uh, whenever we have trampoline but, day in Overland. And every once in a while you look up and go, oh, there's the, the blimp. blimp. Mm-hmm. And when it's low enough, you can hear it brrr, yeah, you know, mm-hmm. buzzing. Yeah. Okay, the, I've decided. Never mind the hot air balloon. If I'm ever going to skydive, I want to do it out of a blimp. And I want you to throw me out the window and say, no ticket. Yep, I'll do it. <laughs> straight, straight out of the movie. <laughs> straight out of Last Crusade. I'll do it. No. Oh, yeah. Uh, guys. Listen, today's the first day of spring. The equinox. Congratulations. We finally made it. <coughs> um, you guys do any rituals? No, but I was reading about the uh, morel mushrooms. Uh-huh. I know you guys are... Oh, right. We're pro morel on this show. You guys... Well, I've never had one. I don't plan on having any. 
I've never had it either. It's so silly, this judgment. You need to have it fried up with ketchup and it'll change your life. But they said that morel mushrooms this year are being found earlier, much earlier than usual. Because hmm. of the short winter? Uh, this is off KSDK. Uh, Missouri's most popular mushroom is once again popping out of the ground throughout the state, but they are reemerging about a month ahead of schedule. Dang. Hey, anybody has some, uh, you know, finds one or two that they would like the British show to try? You know where to find us? My <sighs> stepdad might. He might be down <sighs> in his land right now. Yeah, my uncle. He'll go out and get him. Missouri's morel mushroom season usually, usually begins in the boot heel around late March, but the uh, mushrooms have already been spotted. In numerous counties across the state since late February. Ron from the uh, uh, Missouri Morel Hunting Facebook page. <laughs> Trustworthy. <laughs> so hot. <laughs> <laughs> hey. This guy's just dripping is, in chicks. Is that, mm -hmm. uh, is that, it is. Drenched. It's Ron. Ron. From the Missouri Morel Ron. Hunting you know what? Facebook page. Uh, can I just say, if a man can find a lot of morels, like on his own, and he's out there foraging and he brings them home to me, that is hot. That is super hot. Let's Ron go. says this uh, This certainly is a very early start to the season. We can all imagine that we will have uh, cold fronts come through to stall fruiting throughout the season. It will likely make for a longer season if temps drop dramatically and then rise. Um, the mushrooms are identified by their iconic honeycomb cap with black to brownish ridges and yellowish brown pits. Temperature and uh, precip uh, precipitation are the biggest factors for morel fruiting. Something the mushroom tends to be very picky about. Um, it could take three to four weeks to reach full size. Uh, but by that time, Ron says, somebody else could grab them before you. Mm -hmm. So you better be, you better be, out there. You better be on it. You better yep. be out there. It's so much fun. We used to go as kids, and I haven't done it in 20 years, but I came up on a turkey nest. And all of a sudden, you know, we're all like looking for snakes and making sure we're dodging those and looking for mushrooms. And then all of a sudden, this big old turkey just pops up out of her nest and loses it. Freaks me out. Just, I was gone. <laughs> uh, morels typically pop up in high quality forests at the base of trees like oak, hickory, maple, ash, elm, and cottonwood. What are the ones, uh, what are they called that look like morels, but they're poisonous? Not Lock morels. morels. No, there's a name. There's a name for them. I thought it was a mock this year. There's a name for them. I'm not screwing around foraging for mushrooms. Again, it's like hot air ballooning. Too much could go wrong. False morel. False, False. morel. There we go, yeah. Oh, False no. morel. That's what it is. It's br it has a browner cap. Then it has a white little bodice and a brown cap. That is a false morel. False morel. Where, fa where a normal morel appears to be all of the same color. Look at that one. Whew. Looking like a walnut or something. Like a giant walnut, mm -hmm. right? Somebody comes Probably. to my house with a bag full of morels, and I go, where'd you get those? <laughs> but they're magic morels. Where'd you get those? And he goes, I foraged for them. No thanks. Well, what? How else are they supposed to get them? I don't know. I'll eat your <laughs> the mushrooms. Grocery store. I'll, yeah, if you get them from Schnooks. You know, those people pick their own produce and put it in the grocery store. There's people doing that. No, they come from farms. Wait, so this is. So the, oh, okay. So the false morel is more like a copper brown. Because mm -hmm. the black morel is two different colors too, but it's like, it's really dark. Mm -hmm. And then and, there's the white morel that's all a single color. I've and only... it's quite easy to tell the difference because. Um, like, so you don't have to worry about it, because once you eat the false morel, it'll let you know if you had it or not. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah so, the violent so, diarrhea. Yeah. Scott eat That's first. one way to tell. The violent diarrhea and death. It was the wrong one. <laughs> Man, I want to try one. Yeah, you've never had one either? No. Nah. Oh. I never even heard of this stuff until I was in my 30s. I'll get Jerry on it. They're Jerry, good. we can trust Jerry. I okay? would trust Jerry. I this, Jerry? This is Jerry one of those hunts. You guys Jerry, yeah, he does. This is one of those things that I That's heard about it on this show for the first time. For a Chester boy. And the whole planet, our entire listening audience was like talking like I should have known this. And I felt it was one of those yeah. moments where I felt like I was in a dream. No, when we got, a, when we got the farm property, universe. people were like, you got to hunt morels. I go, what? Yeah, I don't know what that means. Yeah. Morels? Oh, yeah, because we, we got the property in, in late March, April, right at that time of year. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was walking out there with a the real estate guy, and he's... He's kicking around leaves at the bases of trees. I go, what the hell? He goes, oh, the morels. Those are delicious. I go, nope. <laughs> Take as many as you want. You're sitting on a gold mine. You can nope. sell them. I know. Yeah, that's one thing. Moon's right, though, because we were kids. 
my uncles and my mom, everybody evidently have hunted morels their whole existence, but they never took us as kids. No, I never heard of it. And we so grew why? Up, we, I mean, we got plenty of Hoosier in us. Yeah. And uh, and never no, nothing. This is a different. It's a different universe. I'm on a slightly different uh, thread right now. Mm. Well, I hope we get some. Well, the universe I'm from doesn't have more else. Never heard of it. Mm. Doesn't exist. Has less else. I like it here though. I want to try. I want to try your. I want to try your newfangled thing. Hey guys, listen. Hey, we got to take a break because I believe mystery guest will be calling. Oh, huh? can't oh. wait. Oh, I mystery guest. I thought so too. Apparently, we're going early. Wow. East Coast. Who's on the East Coast? Uh oh. It's eight o'clock on the East Coast. Let's Who see. is it? Who's on the East Coast, guys? Is it guys? John Stewart? Is it? I'm not saying anything. Is it David Letterman? Is it John Hamm? Is it's it John, John Goodman? Hamm. All right, today's uh, Team Riz Remember the Day is brought to you by Hot Shot Sports Bar and Girl. St. Louis home for Blues Hockey from St. Charles, Missouri. Wesley Pierce is our yeah, Wesley. Team Damn. Riz Member of the Day. Uh, Wesley has been a listener to the show since uh, the very beginning. Uh, always helps him get through his long commute to work. He loves the new additions to learn and rave to the show and whenever the gang plays matchup with the moon because of the bickering that comes along with it. And Wesley's being a police officer. Wesley loves how much the show supports law enforcement and cannot wait to show his support to the show by wearing his Team Riz jersey proudly. Uh, Wesley Pierce from St. Charles is our Team Riz member of the day. Get super sweet Team Riz member of the day soccer jersey. Get yourself signed up 1057thepoint.com slash Team Riz. I guess we've got to make it quick. Mystery guest is oh. right after the break. Oh, my gosh. I'm so excited. Straight up 7 o'clock, traffic and weather. Moon coming at you. Uh, traffic is brought to you by World of Technology Raceway. The biggest race of 2024 is Sunday, June 2nd. Time to lock in your NASCAR Cup Series tickets now at WWTRaceway.com. All things are clear. Your point forecast, clear and cold this morning, then warmer throughout the day. High of 68. Right now it's 29 at the point studio. Uh, dude, I love mystery guest day. Me too. You, you guys do. are so nervous. I am yeah. so nervous. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I do know why. Cause like, I'm, on the hotline right now is Mystery Guest. And it's a dude, because you let that out yesterday. Okay, well, let's get right to Mystery Guest. <laughs> okay. Okay. Me hear that hotline bling? Uh, hello, Mystery Guest. Hello. Hello. Okay, Mystery Guest is on the phone. Oh, no. We're going to get... Sounds like a relative. Hello. We're, we're it's gonna, Mrs. Doubtfire. It's not Mrs. Doubtfire. <laughs> hello. Okay. So far, in rent. Okay. Should we just go around and ask no, questions? No, go around and ask, start asking okay. questions. Can you fit in a bread box? Oh, that's oh, not. Lord. No, that's the. Come on. Um, okay, let's see. Are you, probably not. Are you. Okay, are you an athlete? Maybe. Okay, maybe. Oh, you have to be honest, mystery guest. <laughs> <laughs> are you professional? I'm being <laughs> what? <laughs> Learn. Is this Emo Phillips? Okay, um. Are you under the age of 50? No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I feel like that hurt. That hurt best to say. Um, uh, are you on the East Coast? No. Okay. No. Okay. Uh, have you done some acting? I have my sad card. He has a SAG he card. Has a SAG card. Okay. Oh. Okay. okay. Um, Learn. Are you an award winning actor? Maybe. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> the babies are killing me. It's going to be a lot of long game <laughs> if it's all babies. <laughs> Oh, man. Rafe, um, ask specific questions. Go. Okay. Have you ever played in a national championship of any kind? Yes. Okay. 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 Moon. Got an athlete. <sighs> okay. Do you, um, did you ever swing a bat professionally? Yes. Okay. Okay. Now, now we're on okay. okay. We're swinging bats. We're winning We're swinging awards. Bats we got our <laughs> SAG card. Mm. Okay. Um, uh, is this Kurt Russell? <laughs> <laughs> I would die, specific. by the way. Kurt, are you Kurt Russell? I could 
Kurt Russell. Sí. <laughs> Damn you, Kurt Russell. <laughs> like our mystery Kurt guest understands when, the game. When did Kurt Russell play in a... <laughs> he Kurt did. Russell's he a played baseball minor, player. He played he in minor leagues. And, and he's, okay. his birthday right. was on Can't, Sunday. She got you. Alone, uh, How do you not know that? Are you a former St. Louis Cardinal? I refuse to answer. Okay. You refuse to answer. Okay. <laughs> oh, I have this. Oh, okay. Uh, shoot. Uh, do you do music as well? In the shower. In the shower. In the shower. Okay. okay. Okay, that takes out my guess. Learn. Are you Ozzy Smith, and do you remember meeting me outside of the Galleria? Oh, my God. <laughs> yes, it's I do. Awesome. <laughs> Smith My is mom on the phone with is us. gonna I love lose you, her mind. Smith. Wow, the whiz. <laughs> the wizard. The whiz. Yes, the whiz. The whiz. Is on the phone. I shorten it. Actually, you know what? What? Ozzy Smith is actually here. No! Get out of here. No way. Oh, wow. No Ozzy Smith. No way. <laughs> Holy smokes. <laughs> oh, Ladies and gentlemen, the wizard, Ozzy Smith, in the studio. Ozzy, take a seat, sir. Oh, <laughs> maybe. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. maybe. Oh, your pea coat is so nice. Yes. Look at you. My mother is going to lose her yes. mind. Biggest Cardinals fan ever. Biggest Ozzy Smith fan Everybody's, ever. Everybody is an Ozzy Smith fan. Yeah. Well, in St. Louis, maybe. <laughs> oh, who, do, who nah. doesn't oh. like Ozzy Smith? I, Ozzy Smith, when I was a little girl going to Cardinals games with my dad, you were the most intriguing person that I was watching. And... I got to, I, and we really did meet outside of the gallery. I don't expect you to remember that, but oh, he remembers. You know, I get that question. You know, I get that question all the time. You know, did help Ozzy with his headphones oh, for God's sake? Oh my God! <laughs> oh. <laughs> there you go. Think backwards. There we go. But anyway, I meet people every day that say, "Hey, do you remember back in 19?" Uh, 82. Uh, I met you at the Galleria. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you! It's you. Yeah, it's oh, yes. 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 Do you get sneak hugged a lot? I do. Yeah. yeah. I had the impulse to hug. My childhood, <laughs> when you walked, I almost hugged the hell out of you, That's man. okay. That's yeah. okay. I was like, there was a little part of my heart that was like. Give me a hug. Oh, give Ozzy Smith a hug. That's awesome. You were the yes, sweetest. Yes. Oh, man. Oh, he's, he smells good, too. You smell oh. good. Uh-oh. <laughs> smells like fresh, fresh baked bread in childhood. Where? Where? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh, me and you see your imagination. You are. Now, where is Ozzy Smith where not, is not welcome? welcome? You I are am. welcome I, everywhere. I am. Really? I am. I've been very fortunate, very lucky to have had a career where, you know, um, people enjoyed what I did, and I, I truly enjoyed what mm -hmm. I did, too, you know, and I, I hope that people that had a chance to see me play, you guys are all so young, you know, <laughs> there, are oh, of, God. there are a lot of people around now that uh, didn't get a chance to see me play, so they have to go on YouTube and, Is it a and stuff. What, 15-time All-Star? Yeah. 13-time yeah. Gold Glove winner? I got lucky, boy. I got lucky. Oh, wow. Yeah, it was, um, it was fun, you know, 15, 15 years, my last 15 years here, my first four were in San Diego. Okay, now let's see, let's see how big Cardinal fans you guys are. Mm. Who did the Cardinals trade to get Ozzy? Oh, it was See, February eleventh, nineteen eighty one. There's a lot of Bobs around mm -hmm. back then. Is, is anybody named Bob? February eleventh, nineteen eighty one. The Cardinals made a trade to get Ozzy. Who was it? Well, it's one of those. Come on, Cardinals fans. fans. I'm trying to think of Padres from back then. Uh, not Tony Gwynn. No. No. Uh, man, I can't think of any Padres from back there. Other than I had, I had your I Padres card. I mean, you were like the reason that I played baseball. You and mm -hmm. Bo Jackson were like the biggest inspirations for me. As far as uh, athletics go, I wanted to be a shortstop, but I wasn't good enough, so I was a second baseman. Uh -huh. I was number one. I was a leadoff hitter. Like I was like little Ozzy here, man, in, as a baseball player. And he tried to do, do a flip. flip. He that's tried to do a flip and broke, yes. broke his back, yeah, no. never played again. That's oh. not true. Oh. I actually I, I actually, I went into music, and I took the backflip into music, that's and I did about yeah, 5,000 backflips on stage. Okay. That's true. Well, it was um, Gary Templeton. Yes, Templeton? Right. No Templeton, way. Yeah, baby. One of right. the most talented guys to ever don a pair of spikes, and anytime you get traded for a player of that caliber... There's a lot of pressure. Yeah, well, and, and I was reading the article in the Post Dispatch yeah. from the, it was uh, you know on this day in history, February 11th, and it was oh my God, what did the Cardinals do? Yes, and, and you know I still hear that now. I have a lot of fun with people now. Uh, the people that come up to me and say, "Boy, 
we're really glad that, that we got you, from, you know, Templeton. And I said, I know you were one of those people that when that trade was consummated, you said, we got who for, right. for Gary? <laughs> But, no, he was certainly one of the most uh, talented guys to ever don a pair of spikes, a true 5-2 player. We get to play a lot of golf and stuff uh, with each other now. And, oh, that's uh, awesome. We get to talk about that. But, uh, yeah, it was, um, it was a trade that we were the two principals in the trade, and I, I think it worked out for both sides. Yeah, but when, so when the trade happened, do you, do you get wind of like, oh, my God, they're, they're, not, they're not digging this in St. Louis? Well, Do you feel that? Yeah, you f you feel the pressure, and like I say, you know, when you when you get traded for a player, he's still the only guy in the National League to get a hundred hits from both sides of the plate. Hmm. You know, so uh, and I was notably a defensive player, so when you get rid of an offense like that, you know, there's always going to be question, as there was. Yeah. And so, um, you know, coming over, uh, the one thing that Whitey told me, he said, "Just be yourself. I, that's all I. That's all I ask. Just be yourself, and don't try and be something that you're not." Hmm. And I came over here, and it it was at that point that I started. Um, working a little, little bit, a lot, a little bit more. Not that I didn't work before, but uh, having a better understanding of of what type of offensive player I was going to yeah. be. And of course, playing on the AstroTurf really helped out a lot as well. Um, you made your annual pilgrimage down to Jupiter mm -hmm. uh, a couple weeks ago. I did. Mm -hmm. um, mentoring the young players. Yeah. Um, you know, here again, I, when we talk about mentoring. It's not about changing anybody. You know, I think the guys have gotten to this point because of their abilities. Mm -hmm. And it's really just trying to reinforce what they already know, that, you know, you got to continue to work hard, strive your own, um, your auditioning every day, you know, for something or somebody. You know, so don't forget that and, um, you know, don't take anything for granted. But and when Ozzie really Smith speaks, do the kids listen? Oh, yeah, certainly. I'm sure certainly. they do. <laughs> they certainly do. And Good we've hope. got a good group of young players who are um, who understand what wearing the birds on the bat is all about. Yeah. They understand the work ethic, and we, we have some really good young players down there. Like, do you explain to them, like, hey, this is a big deal. You know, Cardinal baseball in St. Louis is a big deal. They get it. They get it, you know, and just, just reinforcing yeah. that, that, hey— and, and especially coming off of last year, you know, which was disappointing for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that's not a year that we're accustomed to. So uh, they understand the importance of getting back on track, and uh, they're all working hard to try and get there. Speaking yeah. of, uh, like, a good group, I mean, you, you played with so many different players, so many different types of players over those many years with the Cardinals. Mm -hmm. I mean, everybody from, you know, Tony Pena to Rex mm -hmm. Hudler. To, I mean, there's, like, a yeah. lot of names throughout there. Yeah, hey, you go way back. I was in the Rex Hudler fan club, baby. Uh, <laughs> I, I was all, I'm telling you, my mother is the biggest Cardinals fan. Hey, Coleman coached you. There's yeah, there's there's nothing on the uh, there's nothing on the walls of my parents' house other than Cardinals memorabilia uh -huh. and, and pictures of us. That's it. I got That's a Cardinals great. tattoo, like big thing. But are, are there any names that stand out from there that were just kind of wild personalities that we may not know? Well, Joaquin Andujar comes to mind right away. Um, Jose De Leon. De Leon. Um, you know, oh, one yeah. guy, and I think he just passed away. Uh, I think I just read that. Um, who else? Um, players. I played with Jack Clark. I played with Jack, oh, uh, yeah. the Ripper. Uh, I imagine I, him smoking between innings. No, Jack didn't. Jack didn't smoke, man. Hmm. He smoked that bat, though, boy. Yeah, yeah he, could hit, right. he, he could hit him. We were kind of the table setters for him, and he was really the guy in the middle there in the 80s where things were really rolling, especially in 1985. You know, he was the big bopper. And then you had players like Tommy Herr and mm -hmm. and, uh, and and Tudor. And, and, and oh, yeah. when you get guys like that that have been around, they know their job, and you get a manager like Whitey Herzog who yeah. has two rules, you know, be on time and give 100%. Uh, as a big leaguer, if, if you can't abide by those rules, then you probably shouldn't be here anyway. But yeah. everybody knew what their role was, and they did it to the best of their ability. And it was one of the reasons that we were able to win so much in the 80s. Um, we played some good against some new good New York club, uh, New York Met clubs. Yeah. You know, their pitching and stuff was always outstanding. And um, later, who was the toughest pitcher? You well, went up against like who was the guy like all right we're going into this city or or they're mm -hmm. coming to town you're like oh man well think of, think about this you know when I came into the league in 1978 I had to learn to hit against the likes of Nolan Ryan mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Fergie Jenkins Tom Seaver um, Steve Carlton the list just goes on and on you know so people always ask me J R Richard 
uh, they said, well, who was the toughest? So, p take your pick, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And these weren't guys that just threw. They they could move it up and down. They could move it in and out and change speeds, you know, which is pitching. Uh, today, I think you got guys more of a, more <laughs> throwers than you do pitchers. So uh, guys that just throw, uh, it's just a matter of timing, um, getting the timing. And yeah. and back in those days, you know, it was it was speed and then. You know, move forward a few years when the Atlanta Braves finally got their pitching staff together. You had to face the likes of Gladden and, and Maddox. Maddox and Smoltz. And, and they weren't, trust me, they weren't just throwing. They were pitching. And um, they knew how to exploit the the um, the, the the umpire. You know, it, it, they, they could hit a target. You mm -hmm. know, so if your catcher is good and he just keeps moving out there, they keep hitting it, you know. And. And so they always got the benefit of the doubt, and that was always a real challenge. It became a challenge uh, facing the Atlanta Braves any time you, uh, you, you went into Atlanta. Was there any pitcher that scared you? Because um, I, I, you know what comes to mind is, is Randy Johnson yeah, and John yes, Kruk in yeah. the All-Star game yeah. when yeah. Johnson threw behind Kruk. Yeah, you know, you always, um, you're always aware of guys that, that can be wild. And I call it being conveniently wild. Uh -huh. you know, sometimes being <laughs> Brush your back. That's right. I mean, you, you don't, they don't do that as much anymore. You know, sometimes when, when I would face people like Nolan, you know, you take a big swing against him, and you, you find yourself dusting, your, <laughs> dusting yourself off on the next pitch, you know. Yeah. So uh, they don't do that anymore. And um, that, to me, was part of what the game was all about, you know, uh, the intimidation factor. And well, p pitchers like Bob Gibson, I never had to face Bob, but – Hearing people always talk about how he come inside. Well, if I know a guy's going to come inside, you know, I I got to be I got to got to be light footed in the box. You know, you can't get in there and dig in. I can remember, um, I think it was a World Series where Roger Clemens was facing uh, Mike Piazza, mm, and oh, Piazza's yeah. killing him. You know, and and sometimes as a pitcher, when you're going through it every uh, every day. You don't really know the guys that are beating you bad, you know. And and I say this, I, I tell this story because that story was told to Gibson one time that somebody was really pounding him, and he didn't really know. And so he looked at the stats, and he goes, oh, yeah, well, it, it changed that very quickly, you know. <laughs> mm -hmm. you, um, you, you dust a guy a couple times, and, uh, you know, you don't, you don't want a guy digging in and being able, being very comfortable in there. So... Being conveniently wild is, is is something that's very very important to the success of any any pitcher. Hey, before a game though, would, how much homework would you do? We had uh, uh, Benjamin Molina in here mm -hmm. last week, and he was talking about and, and as a catcher, how much homework he did before a game. Well, you know the the middle of the in, as in a field, shortstop as a shortstop, it, it's the same way. You know, and your good clubs are clubs that that do their homework. You know, you you want to know as much about that opponent as you know about yourself. And so it's important to get in there and um, scouting reports. Now, it's a little bit different today. You know, you have some computers and everything. But Whitey used to sit down and, and, and the charts. And he held the charts in his office. So you could go in um, before the game and, and get the chart book and, and look at, you know, who's hot and who's not. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's part of it was part of my job to know exactly who was hot and who wasn't. As a shortstop, though, would Whitey move you Around. Not really. We had a scouting report, but, you know, I think sometimes you probably take yourself out of a play more than you do. I didn't have to rely on the we, – we had the scouting report. But, say, for instance, if the pitcher didn't throw the ball where it was asked to be thrown. Mm -hmm. So you can find it yourself out matter. of position. Right. So I prided myself on still being able to make a play without necessarily – Yeah, because you can move. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And playing on basically, you know, on the Astro turf, mm -hmm. on the, on the edge of the outside, you know, yeah. of the of the outfield. Yeah, you could play back. Uh, you play a little deeper because the ball gets to you. But the one thing that I try and tell kids today is that Astro turf will make you lazy. You know, so when you make the transition from Astro turf to grass, you know, if if you're not cognizant of that mm -hmm. or telling yourself all the time, you still got to be aggressive. Got to yeah. go get it. Got to go get it. You know, so that was. That was what I had to deal with when we were playing on turf. Watching you with those wild hops. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, crazy. Yeah. And, and no, there's no, no team has that anymore, right? No, no. No more turf. No. It, uh, you know, it, it's all grass now, as, as, as it probably should have been. But at, at that time, you know, it was saving games. The weather back east, 
you know, was always, um, man, you got a lot of rain out. Yeah, you always got and a lot of rain And it would, you know, out. Drain, drain out really quick yeah. with the Astro turf. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Something about you that, so when I think about Bush Stadium, mm -hmm. I go to John Hewlett's voice over the PA, mm -hmm. and then I, th I see your face in my mind, and that's, that's because of your omnipresence. Like, you just, you know, you look like Cardinals baseball to me, <laughs> like in my yeah. memories. Yes. And I find that the personality that you had with the backflips <laughs> and having something that stood out not only your style of playing, but you had like this thing, this flip that everybody was just mesmerized by. Do you find that clubs still kind of nurture the individual personalities of players to come through in this day and age like that? Yeah, I don't know if it's if it's the same. And and when it started for me, you know, um, I had no idea that it would culminate to what it what it did, you know, and create such excitement. And and for us here in St. Louis, I I think that the day that I, the, the, you knew that the season was underway when the, when the flip, when it was time for the flip, you know, the camera's always on you and. Yeah, yeah. You Everybody know, was expecting You know, that it. thing, yeah, that thing, well, you know, before it, there he is, he's loosening up, you know, there, there <laughs> yeah. he goes. You know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and so it, there's, there's always that, uh, I want to make sure that, you know, this is a good one. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And they got lower and lower as the years oh, went okay. along, you know, but, <laughs> yeah. uh, no, I, for the most part, you know, it, it became that thing that that people associated me with, and and uh, I couldn't get away from it. It was it, well, I, I grew up a Yankee fan. Uh -huh. uh, I hated the Mets, so yeah. you know, I got to see you during the All Star games, uh -huh. and it was you know it was a, it was a treat. You know, you yeah. knew Ozzy was going to do the flip. Yeah. yeah, it was it was it was kind of the uh, the sign that they the season was underway. And, yeah, uh, and Did you ever biff one. No, they got lower and lower, though. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what was the last time you attempted one? Good average, though, man. Yeah. What was the last time you attempted a flip? 19, uh, my last season, 96. 96? 41, yeah. It, uh, I didn't quite make it all the way over, but I didn't fall. Yeah, no, it, yeah. it looked good. I, I remember I remember yeah. around that time, because I think that's when La Russa came in. Yeah, I was 41 years old. Yeah, and yeah. they were asking people, they're like, should he do it? Is, uh -huh. Should should Ozzy be doing this? Like, is is the manager going to be discouraged? Screwed, you know, doesn't no. want Ozzy getting injured. Right. No. And I remember that was like a big talk leading up to that to that yeah. game. Is like, is he going to do it? And of course, I can yeah. tell you the summer yeah. between '85 and '86 was my first year of fast pitch little league. Is that right? And the coach fast said, pitch. "Go stand at the position you want to play." Where'd you go? And Twenty-seven kids went to shortstop. <laughs> 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 like, no, Rafe, right field, go. Yeah, yeah. yeah. they're like, no, 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 no. Actually, you come over here. You fill this water jug. <laughs> uh, it yep. was, but it was that literally was the influence that you had on kids at that, yeah. especially at that time, man. Like, the entire team ran out to one position because mm -hmm. everybody wanted. We were eating. We were carving so hard to get the little round yeah. baseball cards and yeah. the Wonder Bread. And the everybody wanted Ozzy. Yeah, you remember that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. John Tudor again. <laughs> 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 Got to eat 18 more peanut butter sandwiches. <laughs> All right, Oz, let's talk about your new endeavor. You got a lot of boozy beverages out now? Oh, well, I don't know a lot of boozy beverages, but, uh, yeah, it's called Backflip. I, you know, I, go, I have a golf tournament every year. Yeah. It's uh, for PGA Reach, which is a, a program that uh, introduces kids to not only the game of golf, but the business of golf mm -hmm. as well. And um, we I, I partnered with... Beck flavorings here here in town, and they created a drink for all the participants, and people liked it so much that they um, they asked where they could get it. Mm -hmm. And so, long story short, we ended up um, bringing it to market, and it came to market yesterday. It's called the backflip. So you got um, cherry, cherry cherry lemonade, lemonade and Paloma, and, and a Paloma. Um, you know, and as a matter of fact, that. I meant to bring you. It's, oh, it's in the car. Man. It's in the car. It's in the car. I, I forgot it's too early. Scott will flip his way down to your car and go. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, I'm good at yeah, they, they came out yesterday, and uh, you'll be able to get them at Schnooks, Deerberg's, Total Wine, uh, Dirt Cheap, um, all over the place. Ballpark Village, the ballpark. That's awesome. Of course, and it's, uh, it's an RTD, ready to, uh, to drink beverage. And, That's uh, hot now. It's, it's not lit. a seltzer. Yeah, it's not a seltzer. You know, so it's... Um, it's and you're good. on the can, and Ozzy's on, on the can, can upside, down. upside down on the can. I love it. As I've spent my life. It's called backflip. So the cherry lemonade and and the backflip Paloma. It's out now. Uh, of course, you got the Ozzy Smith Center in Chesterfield. Yes, uh, Jason and Nicole are here with me this morning, and we probably should have him come on and um, here. Step up to the about, mic. Yeah, step up there, Jason. There you go, man. What's going on at the uh, the Ozzy Smith Center? Uh, well, we, uh, we've been around for about seven years now, and I just, back in November, took it back to just being privately owned, locally owned by me. Mm -hmm. And um, so it's been exciting to 
um, you know, take that on. And uh, there's a there's a an amount of pressure, of course, with his name of on course. the building and, and whatnot. But uh, but it's been fun. So we're just trying to. Uh, so it's a rehab facility. Mm -hmm. Yeah, basically, it's, physical, uh, we, physical we say it's our uh, your your one stop shop to uh, you know get your body back in mm -hmm. the flipping game. So right. that's the uh, that's the key. So I always tell people if your body's starting to break down, come see us. You yeah. Know? So and we're. Uh, we just pride ourselves on on using everybody's own ability to get back to health, and and there are time you know people ask all the time about you know um, you know did I wait too long? There are times where people do wait too long, yeah. so we encourage people to uh, you know address their health as quick as possible. Yeah, but, um, you know we just do our best to get people back in the flipping game. So. All right, that's the Ozzy Smith Center in Chesterfield, right down the road here, you know, on Olive. <laughs> Thank you so much for for pretending to be our mystery guest. Yes. Uh, what a treat. And, and yeah, you really surprised the guys when you came in. You did. And one other thing. I yeah, want sure, to sure. Too, uh, I do a thing called Turn Two, uh, which will be um, May thirty first and August second, where people get a chance to come down and turn a double play with me. You get a Damn. picture. Uh, at Bush Stadium. Can he, oh, can he be 45 years old? Yes, yeah. you can be 45. Really? How about 43 Ten, tomorrow? Yeah, 43. Yeah, oh, it's it, his birthday it tomorrow. It's be a great gift. What about 39? Right. Like, yeah. The female. Yeah, any, or any age, right, okay? okay? Any age, for God's sakes. <laughs> ten, 10 to whenever. Um, but, uh, what about slightly portly? Portly. Uh, I can still come. Skinny, All right, good. Fat, All yeah. right, nice. You can, you can come, but uh, go to ozzysmith.com, um, cardinals.com. Uh, to to get information on that. So that's the turn two. Turn two. With Chance to roll a double play with Ozzy Smith, wow. the legend, oh, Ozzy Smith. Yeah. I mean, there he is, dude. Thank you so much. All I know right. you got thank other you other place to go. The great Ozzy Smith. Well, I'm glad that Ozzy Smith thing went uh, went well. I was. I'll be honest with you. I was nervous. Yep. His voice was amazing too. You didn't yeah. think? Well, I mean, the, the man is a legend. I mean, he's a Hall of Famer. Right. It's a good thing that you didn't tell me, because my mother would have been here. <clears throat> and she would have oh, been, oh, did you put the screws to me? She would have, like, she would have done that in real life. Oh, <laughs> my Like when Ozzy walked through the door? And, oh, she would have lost her mind. I mean, I almost did that when he walked through the door. I saw three people, four people turn into children. Oh, we melt. did. My mother would have. She would have, she would have uh, what, what do you call it, monopolized? Like, she would have, she would have just zoomed in, and it would have been a my mom and a, a mama moon and Ozzy. Moment interview yeah. and moment for 15 minutes. I mean, well, she, I, dude. Well, it's awesome. We played along, and the fact that so I I knew you know we set this up maybe two months ago, and I said, hey, it'd be fun if we did a mystery interview, and he was in the conference room calling, <laughs> and then we just and then after we just walked him in as a surprise. That's yeah, great. I love it. That was cool. I, I do. I was, I was trying to figure it out. All right, I'm like Scott. As soon as they guess, go get him. Scott, you did great, buddy. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Good job. Good job keeping it a secret. Yeah. By the way, I'm sure I wanted to talk about it. <clears throat> my mother's probably not uh, awake right now, but I just texted her that Ozzy Smith says hello because mm. he did. He, yeah, said, he did say hello. He said, "Make sure you tell your mother hello," and she is gonna. I mean, this is gonna be the greatest morning that she's had true. in years. Uh, Rafe had a car battery hooked up to Scott's nipples yesterday, I trying did. to get information out of him. Yeah. But this man held. I didn't speak. Thank. <laughs> thank you. It's Moon all was thinking my, about uh, waterboarding him. Yeah, he's, you just started doing something else, but it, I mean, we can't talk about that. Right. Mm -hmm. No, but again, I saw, I saw, you know, four people melt down into kids. Well, I wish you'd, I said this during the break, but I wasn't prepared for <laughs> how close to crying I got on the air just so now. So sweet. Because I was like, I was transported back. That's why I asked him about if he got sneak hugged all the time, because I'm like, I had the impulse when he walked in be like mine <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah yeah you're mine come here same it was like meeting <laughs> it was like toy story it's kind of like if you found out like, but woody walked in and you saw the toys you're like whoa you can move yeah. <laughs> you know it's like that is how much that dude is ingrained in everyone's child I, i'm telling you i i yeah. i had a jealousy there of you guys, cause not growing up here, not being in St. Louis the years that he played. Yeah, mm -hmm. we had the coolest we were team. Spoiled, man. We had the coolest team because we had Ozzy Smith, yeah. and that was it. it and does, a kid it growing up in Springfield, I had yeah. St. Louis. We come to games all the stink of time, and then we go to Kansas City to see Bo Jackson. So yeah. I had it, Bo, the best. of It both. didn't matter, like if you know, we we traded a pitcher, or you know, Todd Worrell moved on, and Pena retired. And, uh, like we we had Ozzy Smith. Yeah, it was still the we coolest always had team Ozzie. on earth. I'm trying to think who would that be for me. If like Don Mattingly walked in the like yeah. walked in the door, that, I was that'd, be, say, that'd be Mattingly my, or Mantle. 
Don, but Mantle didn't play. Like, Mantle was you didn't get retired. Him. Yeah, you didn't get to see him. Like, I got Don Mattingly was the guy. I saw yeah, Ozzy man. every year, every single year. We went to go see Ozzy Smith. And, but the Cardinals were good. Cardinals were good, but even when they weren't, I mean, we the had, Yankees were not good. We had a couple of years that weren't, you know, whatever in the nineties. Um, yeah, we had a few, and, but but it didn't matter. Like we still went went to watch Ozzy do his wizardry, and you know what's funny is I had this is a, a great moment. We went to Sports Sprint, which is right up the street from us, and I got a red jersey with like you know the 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 blue uh, kind of um, piping on it. And got my name on the back and a number one printed on the thing. Mm. And I outgrew that, you know, I'm sure within two years. But I, in every single picture as a, as a little kid, I'm in that shirt. Even though it was just a red shirt, yeah. you know, it wasn't like a legit Cardinal shirt. I saved it and I forced my kids to wear it. <laughs> right. So I got sad. you want them to experience the yeah. magic you did. I got sad not only when I outgrew it, but when each one of the kids yeah. outgrew Aww. it. And I still have that shirt. And it's basically an Ozzy Smith ripoff. Like, I'm just, I'm, I'm number one. I just yeah, wanted a awesome. number one I wasn't shirt. joking either, dude. Like, we used to, I don't know if it was bunny bread or wonder bread, but there used to be in the bottom of the loaf. You a remember. circular baseball card. That was, it was all St. Louis Cardinals. But you had to eat the whole loaf to get to the heel of the bread to get it. And I'm, I mean, I carb loaded for a summer you trying to get Ozzy Smith's. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's funny, though. They printed like, like six of them and the rest were. I know. It was all John Tudor, dude. You know, I got like 30 that. John Tudors. Stuff I'm, like that. I'm, you know? I'm willing to bet I'm the first person that has said the name Rex Hedler in front of him in a couple decades. Yeah. Yeah. He moved on to the Pirates, didn't he? Oh, yeah, I think so. Cutler was a pirate. He, he goes, he goes. Oh, <laughs> he looked like wow, that's a name. Just thinking about <laughs> some things, you know, like like meeting your sports heroes. Even still, for us as adults, it's like holy cow, you know, we still got that you know whimsical feeling. But things we miss about being a kid: number one, not having to pay for anything. Oh yeah, miss that. Falling asleep that. in the car and magically waking up in bed. Yeah, those days, that was cool. Even getting picked up from the couch and moved to your bed without you even knowing—that was a magical thing. Your knees and back not constantly aching. I don't have that yet. Not having to figure out what to cook every day. It was the angels. Not knowing how insane the world is, or at least uh, you didn't have to worry about it because the adults were in charge. Yeah. Things were missing by being a kid. Summer break. Oh, yeah. Your evenings and weekends were wide open. Being spoiled rotten by your grandparents. Mm hmm. Being oblivious to how dysfunction your fa dysfunctional your family was. Oh, yeah. Well, not understanding it yet. You knew something was up. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> and there was like a zone, too, where like a, you kind of appreciated it. And then it gets... And then it gets... Oh, actually, this sucks. How about your home feeling much roomier? <laughs> Either because it was a house and, and you're an apartment now, or maybe because you were just smaller, so it felt yeah. bigger. Dude, I thought, I, thought, I thought my house was one of the bigger ones. And it, and it, it may have been in my friend group. Dudes, it's tiny. Mm -hmm. my, my childhood house is tiny. That is your imagination was big too. Then you know, yeah. Yeah. like at my dad's house, I thought he had the biggest living room ever. And I go back to that house today, and it is itty bitty. My kids complain about our house. They actually, they kind of complain about our house like every other week. Now, granted, you know, they go to their other, you know, like our ex's houses, yeah. and and they're all bigger than ours. Um, so like you know, they see our house as small somehow. And I'm like, do you understand? Go look at grandma's house. Like, yeah, uh, that's what I grew up in. We had no place to go, and yeah. still it was huge. What's wrong with you? Yeah, it was a weird, I think I've talked about this before, but my childhood home, and well, there was a lot of trauma and stuff, too, so I get all that wrapped up, but I, like, went and it was abandoned. It got bulldozed to the ground, but, like, walking through your childhood home after it's, like, been abandoned and nature has kind of taken over. That's yeah. wild. It's weird, dude. Mm -hmm. It's like walking through a haunted house in a lot of ways. But yeah. the foot And it was a lot smaller. Like, the things I remembered, I'm like, oh, I remember this feeling, my bedroom feeling different. I remember the feeling like this room was... Was the footprint of the house smaller than what you... What you yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, when you, as a kid, I remember, like, yeah, it seemed like the square footage had gone down a little bit. And now, it wasn't a big house, believe me. It felt small when I was in it, but it felt even smaller. Hmm. I was like, man, we had five people in this house. That's crazy. Yeah. That's how, whenever I go down to West Frankfurt, I always drive by my grandma's old house because it's where essentially I grew up the most and I was outside. And her yard, I mean, even though it was two lots, it felt like it was. 700 acres, you know, and yeah. the guy who lives there now, he's like, let the field I used to run in overgrow. And I, I, it takes everything I have not to knock on the door and be like, let me get on that lawnmower and just mow this <laughs> grass yeah. because yeah. I want to see it again so bad. Oh man. Yeah. In your heart, you yeah. want it. I know there's like a field across from my old house where we played pickup football games. And I'm like, man, I remember that feeling like it was a hundred yards. It's just two lots. Just like you said, yeah. it's like two lots side by side probably, but we had... 
we turned it into a baseball diamond and a football field and whatever whatever we wanted it to be. Man, it would be fun to see my childhood home because the lady that bought it from us still lives there. That's cool. And completely remodeled Down everything. Down in Springfield? Yeah. You should go. Just Dude, go knock on the door. His grandma house, his grandma's oh, house in Shelbina. Is awesome. It's, it's it was pre- huge when I was a kid. It's still big. I would say it's probably still pretty big. It's like an old, old, old farmhouse that's like a three story. It's not three stories, but it has an attic that you could like walk in, like yeah. a movie. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. know, it's like a movie house and it's super old and haunted the big porch. looking. Mm, yeah, it's got I a porch that. with bees all over it. it like <laughs> it's it's uh it, it felt like it felt like a castle and an abandoned church building when we were kids. We would hide and seek in there. And the way that it was built was weird. You had to pass through bedrooms yeah. to get to other rooms. Mm. Very bizarre, mm. dude. And uh, there's like the hidden stairwell. There's a few hidden things That's in there. Right. It's pretty awesome. Well. I'm going to start crying now. Don't do that. <laughs> yeah. All right. Today no, is. Uh, say, Ozzy is a big enough deal. My, yeah. my mom has uh, just called. Oh, tell you I, wanna, <laughs> I will, but <laughs> I know she's probably freaking out too. All right, today is uh, March 19th, back in the day, 93 years ago, 1931, Nevada uh, legalizes gambling. How's that going? 49 years ago, 1975, Kiss releases their third record, Dress to Kill, featuring their classic jam, rock and roll all night. 1931, you say, for the gambling? Yeah. Dang, even back then, they're like, we got to do something. 43 years ago, 1981, the first Porky's movie was uh, was released. Kim Cattrall played Miss Honeywell. A.K.A. Lassie, the gym teacher, and uh, Webster's mom, Susan Clark, played the stripper named what? Anybody seen Porky's? Uh-uh. She played a stripper named Cherry Forever. Cherry Forever. Cherry Forever. Uh, 42 years ago, 1982, Randy Rhodes, lead guitarist for Ozzy Osbourne, was killed in a freak accident in Leesburg, Florida. When the plane he was riding in buzzed Ozzy's tour bus, then crashed into a house. Golly. The pilot and female passenger also died. Randy was only 25 years old. Wild. Uh, 36 years ago, 1988, at the Community World Theater in Tacoma, Washington, Nirvana uses the name Nirvana for the very first time. Can anybody tell me the names they previously went by? Yes. Uh, Ooh. I don't know. That's a good trivia question. Man, that is a great trivia. They'd previously gone by Skid Row, Ted, Ed, Fred. There's something about poop, too. Pen, Cap, Chew, and Bliss. Hmm. I thought there was something about poop. Uh, I don't know that one. Pen I knew, I knew, you? I knew Pen Capped you. I didn't know Ted Ed Fred. Uh, that same day, Michael Jackson begins construction in Santa Barbara, California for what would be the Neverland Ranch. Uh, 29 years ago, 1995, Michael Jordan makes his first NBA comeback and rejoins the Chicago Bulls after leaving basketball for over a year to become a mediocre Major League Baseball player. He wore, his, uh, he wore his junior high number, 45, because the Bulls officially retired his old number, 23, the first time he retired from the game. 20 years ago today, 2004, Learn's favorite movie? Oh, Eternal Sunshine of a Spotless Mind. Came out 20 years ago today. That's awesome. Uh, 14 years ago, 2010, Justin Bieber unleashes his debut record. And 12 years ago in 2012, Wendy's overtakes Burger King as the second biggest burger joint in the U.S. McDonald's still has more locations than both combined. And that's what happened back in the day. <clears throat> All right, time to find out what's going on in the world of music and entertainment with your Crap on Celebrities. And it's brought to you by Bright House Plumbing. Call the best, flush the rest, brighthouseco.com, 636-600-0188. John Mellencamp cut his show a little short the other night in Toledo. He was telling a story in between songs about his grandmother when a heckler called him out for talking too much. We actually have audio of this. And she went, it's just like you, buddy, to be a smart aleck when I'm talking to Jesus. <laughs> And then it got real quiet. Oh. He yelled, play some music. Uh huh. What do you think I mean, Jimmy? <laughs> hey, Joe, find this guy and let me see him after the show. Anyway, before I was so rudely interrupted. Guys, I can stop this show right now and just go home. Since you've been so wonderful, I'm going to cut about 10 songs out of the show. Here we go. A little bit of Now keep going. Oh, it's Show's over. Oh, that's it? 
So, oh, you really walked off? So he walked off stage after playing a snippet of Jack and Diane. And according to Toledo Blade, Mellencamp then returned to stage about five minutes later, performed several more songs, including some of his favorites, like Pink Houses oh, and Rain on Scarecrow. That's awesome. But, you know, John Mellencamp <laughs> has a hot head. He and his yeah, sons, they get into it. Notoriously hot head. And so, I, you know. And he has got a very large head. And he's got a huge head. He's, you ever see John Mellencamp's head? Dude, his hair. <laughs> Mellencamp. Dude. <laughs> yeah. Me Big Mellencamp. <laughs> Big Mellencamp. Big Mellencamp. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, you don't want to. John Mellencamp will meet you outside still. You know? I think so. So mm -hmm. that guy, obviously. When, when he said, hey, take yeah, him back to see me after the show, I believe him. He called He's him a, a sea guy. sucker. That's what, he, that's what was bleeped out. And so, I mean, he was like. I think he has anger management problems big time, right? <laughs> no and so I think walking way. off stage, somebody probably got him to cool down, was like, get your ass back out there, yeah. you know? So anyway. Uh, Nirvana called themselves fecal matter. Ah, that's yeah. what it was. what was. Thank you. There was a guy that told me a, a friend of mine that's a Chiefs ticket holder was the Walmart music buyer. Mm -hmm. He knows Garth Brooks really well. He's done tons of stuff with Garth. But he said that, that I didn't know this was a thing, like, Artists used to have to come in front of all these Walmart executives at like 7 o'clock in the morning at a board meeting and play oh, yeah. music to get the music into Walmart. Oh, Back yeah. when that was a big thing, and he's like, John Mellencamp, he's like, dude, he threatened to walk. <laughs> he's like, it's too early for music. This sucks. I'm not doing this. He's like, got yeah. mad, and then he walked out, and they had to go get him. He got back in. He got mad, walked out again. Yeah. So... He's got a he's got a little bit of like swamp justice. He's in still him. he's still yeah. a smoker. He don't oh, care. Oh yeah, man. he don't yeah. care. John Mellencamp don't care. The way Taylor Swift fans treat each other has reminded Eddie Vedder of how people treat each other when they go, used to go to punk rock shows. He says the run up to it, making friendship bracelets with her, and the generosity of these young girls and boys trading the bracelets with different messages on them. Um, he says they found their tribe. They're all agreeing on something. The craziest thing, it reminded me of the punk rock crowds of being aligned with all the misfits in town back in the day. It was galvanizing and powerful. He took his daughters to go see Taylor Swift. I bet you had good seats. And he had pretty good seats. <laughs> and he's saying she's punk rock. Uh, speaking of uh, Taylor Swift, our good friend Courtney Diamond's coming in oh, at 830, yeah. a.k.a. 8 Ball, mm -hmm. our old intern. So she's got... Um, I think she does call Taylor Made, which is going to be March 30th over at Delmar Hall. It's a tribute yeah. to Taylor Swift, and she sings all the songs. She has been selling out theaters around town. The mm -hmm. Wildy, she did essentially a residency. I, she probably did like nine shows at the Wildy. Sold each one of them out. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah She's it's, incredible. She calls it the Taylor Swift experience. Mm, yeah. So it's called Taylor Made. Courtney's going to come in, uh, talk a little about the show. We'll play a game. She's a great girl. See how much of a uh, Taylor Swift fan she really is. Ooh, can't wait. On Sunday night, Ozzy Osbourne had roughly 3,500 more votes than Dave Matthews' band for the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame fan vote. But something has happened because Dave Matthews is now in the lead for the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame fan vote, okay? Um, you know, I don't know how I feel about this. <laughs> I saw this over thing. who? Over Ozzy. By how much? Um, over about 2,000 votes. Okay, but the fan vote, didn't Dave Matthews win the fan vote a couple of years ago? This is his second time, right. And and it's still not in. So the fan That's vote wild. is meaningless. It is meaningless, but I don't want to see Ozzy be second to Dave Matthews. This is a pride thing How, for me. What BS, by the way, to have the fans go, okay, here's your, the, the <laughs> Rock and Roll Hall of Fame going, here, all right, fans, your chance to vote for your you know favorite rocker to get in, and them going, nah. Yeah. <laughs> well, as, Here's who the fans voted in. Nah. I guess that's rock and roll, right? As it goes right now, if we just did the fan vote, because in April is when we find out who the inductees for 2024 will be. If Foreigner doesn't get in. They're number three right now. Right now, Mariah Carey, Lenny Kravitz, Cher, Peter Frampton, Foreigner, Ozzy Osbourne, and Dave Matthews. Those are your uh, essentially seven that are in the league. Kravitz should get in. Yeah. Foreigner should get in. Ozzy should get in. All right. What about Dave Matthews' band? No. Nah. Cultural wow. impact. Think about all your yeah. stoner friends that love Dave. Still going strong. I, I get it. Dave Matthews Band is a thing. You don't I, think so? It, eventually? Or you still think going so? strong? No, I, I you just don't think so now. The dude has done sheds I, for 20 I get, I've, years. I've seen him. Yeah, me too. I saw him play Giant Stadium I've sold out. And his band is insane. Yeah, and, and yeah, his his whole band uh, from from Carter to uh, to Clarence to uh, was was Clarence's horn player as well. No, that's you're thinking Bruce Springsteen. That's yeah, Bruce Springsteen. I thought he played with. Did he play with? You're thinking Clarence Clemens. Yeah, didn't he play with Dave for a while? No. Oh, I thought he did. Well, either way, they they've got Boyd Tinsley. 
They've got fiddler. Mm. Yeah, that guy. They've, they've Carter Buford, who's your the drummer. Carter Buford is the is the drummer. They got these uh, <clears throat> bass players. They've been through two or three that are just world class. We're talking about a world class band, right? Yeah. That has consistently put out great records, singles, and tours. And they got the Dead fans. Like it's fine. Dave Matthew fans are the same as Deadheads. I, it's fine. I like some of his songs. The, sto the most stoned I've ever been was yeah. at a Dave Matthews show, and I didn't even smoke anything. I was just in the lawn. <laughs> you don't like any Grateful Dead songs, and you still agree that they should be. I, I like some. Uh, there's that one. Don't even touch a gray. <laughs> Save like touch gray. Sugary. Come on. I like man. touch a gray. I like. Uh, you know more. Jones. Jones. You know more Dave Matthews. Oh, than what's you know the other Grateful one? Dead. Dun, 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 shake down street. That's a good one. I don't. I know very little Grateful Dead. That's How many I'm Dave saying, Matthew dude. band? Dave Matthews band songs do you get? Crash into me. Under the table and dreaming records. Well, I don't want you to say. <laughs> I just think of that TikTok where he's dancing on stage. Have you seen it? Oh, no. yeah. And someone's like, Dave Matthews doesn't have a song that requires him to go this hard. Right. Because <laughs> he's like shaking his knee. He's dancing around like Elvis Presley. And they're like, you don't have a single song that would require you to dance in that manner. <laughs> and that is why I just have a hard time with it. I'm like, it's fine. It's uh, it's really good. I mean, it. I'll not deny that he had a moment in time that every frat dude That's, in America, he was just frat rock. It's frat yes. rock. It's fine. There's a place for it. I just don't think it, ahead of Ozzy Osbourne. Right. Ahead of Ozzy. That's what I'm talking about. That's, that is sad. That's Ozzy absurd. should bite his head off. Yeah, dude. He's 6,000 votes That's in the lead. I mean, it, like what happened? Did the Dave Matthews band fans is. go, oh my God, we got voted on this. Like now they're voting? Out of nowhere. I said, I'm sorry, Ozzy. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, though, in general, I would say Dave Matthews uh, fans are probably more voters than Ozzy fans. Yeah. What does that mean? Too. No, metalheads, though, are what actually very passionate. Mean? Like, they're getting behind this even though they hate the Rock and Roll Hall What of do you fame. mean by these people? I think Ozzy's fans <laughs> think they can't vote because they have a felony. Exactly what you think. Yeah. Oh, you like can the, vote if you have a yeah, felony. Yeah, it doesn't count for the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, guys. Vote daily. <laughs> yeah, this is the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. I'd vote for Ozzy, but I got three felonies. I'm so. saying our habits are different than the Dave Matthews fans have it. Yeah. That's all I'm saying, all man. Right. All right. We're all in trouble. Um, Richard Simmons. Guys, did you... Okay, we don't follow Richard Simmons on socials, but he popped yeah, up in my... Yeah, we do. I saw this yesterday. I saw this yesterday, too, feed. but it wasn't under my following. It was under something for me. And I was like, what's going on? So Richard Simmons yesterday on social says, I have some news to tell you. Please don't be sad. I am dying. Oh, I can see your faces now. The truth is, we're all dying. Every day we live, we are getting closer to our death. Why am I telling you this? Because I want you to enjoy your life to the fullest. Every Show yourself, day. Richard. Show yourself, Richard. <laughs> he says, get up in the morning, look at the sky, and count your blessings and enjoy. So I read that, and I'm like, oh, my God, is he sick? But then I thought, That's, oh, it's a positive. No, everybody took it that way. No, I know. And so now... I'm you, I'm, Richard Simmons is dying? So Richard Simmons has now apologized to fans for sparking all of our concerns in that bizarre post yesterday. He says, sorry, many of you have gotten upset about the message today. Even the press has gotten in touch with me. I am not dying. It was a message about saying how we should embrace every day that we have. Sorry for the confusion. Love, Richard. No, so I mean, what it's, they on, say it's on is, brand, though. Like, you yeah. know, he's, like the, he's, just doing, he's just doing his positive rant. So what they say is Richard Simmons actually is out amongst us and walking around, but uh -huh. he, he doesn't look like you would... Oh, Richard got, Simmons had the, the signature Ross? look with the you know the shorts the are gone and the tank. Mm -hmm. Now they say now he's got like a goatee. Oh, the, can you imagine like a goatee? And he's sweet. got slick dark hair and he's oh, in like yeah. a he's a biker. Like, Daddy <laughs> Simmons, sweet, like, Daddy leathered Simmons. out. Oh, dude, <laughs> he's Danny Trejo. Whew. Well, <laughs> I'm slick down for all of that. <laughs> he's got a, yeah, down. he's got a ponytail. Um, you know, obviously we miss Richard Simmons so much. Where is he? In January, he spoke up about the upcoming biopic uh, starring Polly Shore, which is a perfect casting in my opinion. He never gave permission for that, but it's, it is happening. So we look forward to hearing and seeing more about Richard Simmons in the future. He's not dying. Mr. Beast, uh, a.k.a. Jimmy Donaldson, is taking his antics to new heights. There's a new game show that's about ready to be unleashed called Beast Games on Amazon Prime. It's a reality competition featuring 1,000 different contestants all competing for a $5 million cash payout. Dude, this guy is printing money. Yes. This is the guy. This is the highest prize for in single prize history that is the biggest. $5 million. This is the this is the the biggest celebrity for teenagers. Tweens yeah. and teens. Mr. Beast is the oh, guy. Oh yeah. Wow. So there's no detail specifically about the challenges that will be featured in Beast Games, and there's no premiere date set, but the anticipation is high, and it will be on Amazon Prime. He seems like a nice dude. I watch some of his videos. He seems like a nice guy. Uh, He's nice. I, watch, I watch some of the videos with my kids. It's pretty wholesome stuff. Is it? Good. Uh, seems like he's having a good time.
Well, speaking of having a good time, Tom Cruise is having a really good time. He was seen with a film crew scaling the Hollywood sign. No word what's going on there. Uh, the actor wore an all-black T-shirt, pants, and shoes for the shoot. And at one point, Tom Cruise flashed his abs from underneath his shirt, largely thanks to his long-running Mission Impossible series. He's become synonymous with dangerous stunts seen and in running. all those action-packed films. He's been synonymous with running. He's running. Oh, look, another movie where Tom Cruise is what's running. What's Nobody can run faster than him. Something like that. Is it because he's so close to the ground like all of us? Or? I don't know, dude. If, no, he has, it, he has it in his contract that he can't be seen being outran, outran on. Yeah. That, I mean, cool that's that's the rumor. <laughs> I'm into that. Great. Dude, go watch that last, uh, that last um, Mission what is Impossible. it, Mission Impossible movie? It's, it's, you said the it's mediocre. On, the only, it is very mediocre. The only thing you will remember is that Tom Cruise doesn't stop running. <laughs> it's just running. I need to see it. Speaking of movies and running, you guys, Aaron Taylor Johnson. Do we know him? He's from the Kick-Ass movie. Yes. Okay. Well, he may be the next James Bond. He's 33 years old, and he was the running for the top alongside actors, uh, Killian Murphy, Idris Elba, Henry Cavill, and James Norton. I, I'm still... I'm on. That's your new James Bond. Say what? Kick-Ass. Well, what's, what's his name? His name Aaron is... Taylor Johnson. Aaron Taylor Johnson. He was Taylor in... Johnson. Uh, what was the Brad Pitt train Bullet movie? Train. Bullet Train. He was Which one was of good. Oh, this guy. That would be good. Oh, he's wait, cute. They, they were, he he's was, in Craven, too. He's a new Marvel character. They were Spider rumoring. Man, bad guy. Wait, isn't he also the guy that was uh, the, the sister of the Elizabeth Olsen character? He's the guy that's the Yeah, sister. he was Quicksilver. He's the guy that's the sister. Is that what he took his so? wife's last name. And how do we feel about that? James Bond wouldn't take it. No, he would not. <laughs> You're so James old. Bond would not take it. <laughs> so wait, so Taylor's his last name? The name Aaron? is Bond. Aaron? He's hyphenated. Johnson. James Bond Atkins, actually. <laughs> I like it. James my wife's Bond. last name. Aaron Perry Taylor Bond Johnson. hyphen Atkins. Yes, Hell Bond. yeah. James hyphen Atkins Bond. <laughs> I'm trying to think of what his voice is. It's British. I'm going to talk like oh, James Bond. <laughs> is this going to be Jim? I take be... that shaking, not stir, please. <laughs> it's going to be Jimmy Bond. Again, this guy's really, he he's a lowborn James Bond. No, he, so it's, it's he's a hot guy. His he real looks last like name Jimmy. is Aaron Johnson, but it took his, he married well, a tailor. Hmm. Oh, I see. You going to be okay? He looks like a Jimmy, right? <laughs> Jimmy Bond. Hey, Jimmy. Hey, Jimmy, Jimmy Bond. Bond. Hey. Hey, man. How's your mother? <laughs> hey, Scott, guess what? Chicken gizzards. All eight Spider-Man movies are returning to the big screen. Sony Pictures Finally. is bringing back the movies to theaters on consecutive Mondays. So Spider-Man Mondays is going to be a thing starting on April 15th. All the Spider-Mans? All of the Spider-Mans. You will be able to watch it, and we're going to have a, a link up on the blog. Uh, so if you want to get tickets, you can. Yay. Disney Plus announced that Wish will debut on April 3rd, in case your kiddos are waiting on that. Instagram is reportedly testing a feature where you can put a new spin on somebody else's reel. Instagram spin will allow you to take somebody's reel and swap the audio and text out to create a new version of content. What does that mean? Um, that it's just a remix <laughs> of content. Like somebody could take the Dropkick video that we put in a reel, yeah. and they could remix it. For their own. Oh, why would I want? Pretty cool why stuff. Why would I want somebody to do that? I don't know. This is just what they do. Why would I want that? Um, it's fun. <laughs> it's fun <laughs> engagement, buddy. Riz, you've been real worried about Kate Middleton. In fact, on Monday, yeah. you, you looked at me and said, "Hey, I hate to tell you this, but I'm kind of worried about Princess." I, you know what's funny? I got home yesterday and I said to my wife, "I go, I'm, I think I'm into this. Where is Kate Middleton? <laughs> right. Like, yeah. I feel like I'm invested, and I want to know where she is." Well, I put this in here just for you. Everyone has been worried about Kate Middleton since her sudden abdominal surgery back in January. She was finally seen out and about at her home near Windsor, and the son obtained a video of the Princess of Wales paying a visit to her favorite Windsor farm stand. She looked happy, relaxed, and healthy. I don't buy it. What? It's AI. No, it looks it's so AI. convincing. AI. I mean, it looks just News. like her. What are you talking about? What do you about? think? What, do you, what else do you want? You want to talk to her? You want her on camera talking? No, have you seen a picture of it? I'm disappointed it's in hilarious. the way I think it's a body double. What? It doesn't look buy it. much like her at all. People are encouraged by this. This is a sign of her I getting don't out. Buy it. You're being for real? I, I yeah, yeah. The, you got to uh, see it. It's so ridiculous. I, I, I saw it. I, I, I think it's going to be an SNL I skit. think uh, tomorrow they're supposed to make some kind of announcement, from what I hear. What, what do you think it is? Some kind of announcement from Buckingham. 
Buckingham on tour. Going across the <laughs> globe. Buckingham. It's going to be awesome. Yeah, they, didn't say what, the they didn't say what Buckingham. You it could be Lindsay Kate. Buckingham. Could I'm not be. sure. You could wanted cool Kate. Yeah. Now, Nick. coming to the Let's Fox go. Theater. The fabulous Fox. <laughs> Just Windsor's on ice. Oh, I, uh, yeah. I don't know, man. Something's up. Something's up. Something's up, and I'm. I feel like I. I need to know. There's tons of. Uh, I'm getting a little obsessed. Middle-aged white you. chicks on TikTok making all up all sorts of theories that mm. were in my feed last night, and I was going down the rabbit hole pretty Uh-oh. good too. They so. say she's in a coma, and right. that was a body double. Oh my gosh! Yeah. You think? You think that? Uh, what, uh, what was his name? What's, what's the husband? Not Harry. The other one. William. William. Yeah, William. You think William's gonna have his wife in a coma, and he's all prancing around? At a tree farm or something with with a body double just to just well, fool folks. No think way. about going to the tree farm. I mean, yep. you don't want to pass that up. You don't want to pass trees. That up. But, but wasn't he smiling Listen, like? Put it, to, look, put it together. Trees, wood, coffin. coffin. I'm with oh. you. I'm with you. Oh no! No, you know what? Princess Kate can't that be dead. That was compelling. A couple of uh, just one hits here. Um, <laughs> My one hitter. Dr. Dre gets a star on his Hollywood Walk of Fame today. March Madness gets going with the first four games. I don't know why I'm saying that. That's sports. Lollapalooza lineup is announced later today. Oh, that hasn't been announced yet? No, I guess not. Um, Caitlyn Jenner and Lamar Odom are launching a sports podcast. They are former in-laws, and so uh, it will be a new take on sports. It's going to be called Keeping Up With Sports. (laughs) It's going to be what the Kardashians did to us. Yes, exactly. (laughs) And finally, this is a station that helped break grunge music on the St. Louis airwaves. Uh, Moon sent me this list yesterday. Ranker.com put together a list of the grungiest bands of all time. Oh, yeah. This was from, um, uh, this was from Sean. Listener Sean. Oh, oh listener Sean. Hey, Sean. Hey, Sean. Uh, Give me the grungiest band of all time. So, Nirvana. Nirvana is number one. Alice in Chains. Alice in Chains is number two. Keep going. Uh, okay. Soundgarden. Soundgarden is number three. <laughs> yeah. uh, Pearl, good Pearl Jam is number four. Al- uh, wait, the back half of this list is interesting. The front Hole. Heart, the part is uh, very typical. Hole, big, that's a good yeah. That's a good Hole is not on the list. Pumpkins. Uh. Pumpkins are number six. Uh. <clears throat> do they consider mm. Stone Temple Violence? They do, number five. Wow. Dang. Keep going. Okay. Toadies. I'll, I'll be amazed if you guys can get the last Stone Temple Pilots. Four. Oh, Sonic Youth. Stone Temple Pilots, like, they wore the grunge. Mud Honey's not on there. They're, they're not grunge. grunge. They take uh, the OG. Stone Temple Pilots is a country and classic rock band yes. disguised as a, as a grunge band. Mud Prove Honey and me. Sonic Youth both on the list. Well, I saw Melvin. Clip, what's the guitar Not on the list. Dele- DeLeo? Yeah, he was talking about how he was using old-time rag music as some of his guitar licks. Hmm. Yeah, it's a, it's, a it's, country, awesome. it's a country band influenced by classic rock disguised as a grunge band. Prove me wrong. Keep that going. A, that was a lot to pull apart to try to prove you wrong. Uh. <laughs> That's Give me the last work. four. That sounds like a lot of work. Because uh, because a couple of these bands are periphery bands. And I'm Pixies. Just Pixies, number eight. Very good. The Melvins? The Melvins, oh, I already no. said the Melvins. Oh, Scott, sorry. Thank you. Well, we got to go with Ween. Ween, no. Ween, no Ween. Radiohead. <laughs> no. Weezer. Grunge bands, man. I know. Grunge. I know. Spin Doctors. Ooh. No. <laughs> it's nothing we play. Oh, it is. Oh, it is. We oh, it play... Is. I want to say we. There's one song that we play by the number ten, and yes, See we play the other oh, two. Dada. Nah. <laughs> Dada. Dido. Dido. No, no. Uh, <laughs> we play. We would play one song from this band. Number ten. We would play one song from this. Temple band. of the Dog. Temple of the Dog is number nine. Oh, hey, nice. We probably play a couple from them. So Soundgarden's the what's their side? One projects? of these bands gets played every hour on this station. I would say the Foo Fighters. Red Hot Chili Peppers. Mm-mm, mm-mm, mm-mm. This is a band you love. Do you think they're grunge? Addiction, hey, Lord, do you think it's grunge? Tool. It is tool. And I don't think they're grunge, no, right? They're, 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 no, that's they're progressive. Pro- they're progressive, they're progressive hard rock. Yeah. And then Mad Season is number 10. Oh, I love Mad Season. I love Mad Season, oh. too. What's a Mad Season song? Um, River of Deceit. Uh, River of Deceit. Mad above. Season again. Is that, is that the only one that we play? Anything. Yeah, I would say River, River, River of Deceit. River of Deceit is, is the song that we would know. And that's uh, Lane, Lane Staley. Staley. I, th- I think one of the Pearl Jam guys is in that too. Yeah, oh, I so think it's you're another, right. another side project. Yeah. yeah, another side so project. Kind of it was like Mother Love Bone and then Mad Season. Yeah. Celebrity yeah. celebrating a birthday today, Eduardo Saverin. This is the guy who helped create Facebook and then got shut out by Mark Zuckerberg. Oh, I saw the movie. Worry not. The guy's worth $27.5 billion. He's 42. Andy Reid is 66. Bruce Willis is 69. Harvey Weinstein is serving 23 years for criminal sexual conduct and third-degree rape and is 72 today. Glenn Close is 77. Ruth Pointer of the Pointer Sisters uh, is 78. I'm so glad she joined a band, by the way, that had a similar name. It is interesting. It it worked out well for her. Odds. Uh, 78. And Ursula Andress 
That is the first Bond girl. We were talking about James Bond, and the mm -hmm. first Bond girl turns 88 years old today. All right, today's porno birthday, which is being brought to you by Patricia's, where fun and fantasy meet, is Holly West. And today's birthday girl has been in 322 fine films, including huh, Two in the Chamber, Backdoor Junkies, The Bad News Bitches 3, a movie called Bum Rushed, Captain Stab and One, Liquid Gold, 17. Scott's favorite, Monster Meat 13. That's oh. a great flick. Who's Nail and Palin? And who could forget her role in 20, uh, 2015's Toshi Anyone? Hmm. <laughs> Wait, she's in Nail and Palin with Lisa Ann? Yeah. Nice. Is that the Palin lady? Who's Nail and Palin? No, Lisa Ann was, was oh. the. Uh, Sarah Palin. Sarah Palin. <laughs> uh, Holly West is 45 years old. It's your porno birthday. <laughs> Those are your crappy birthdays, and that was your crap on celebrities. <laughs> what? To, to Moon's Tom Cruise point, somebody emailed, Nick emailed in, Frodo should have just given the ring to Tom Cruise. The ring would have been in Mordor in about six minutes. Oh, yeah, easily. <laughs> and it would have broken Smeagol's arm on the way. <laughs> yeah, for sure, dude. Uh, All right, we'll take a break. We'll come back with some of your emails, and we'll crown the douchebag of the day. It is 816. It is Tuesday. Traffic and weather moon coming at you. Traffic is brought to you by Worldwide Technology Raceway. The biggest race of 2024 is Sunday, June 2nd. Time to lock in your NASCAR Cup Series tickets now at www.raceway.com. We got delays 270 eastbound between Gravoy and Manchester. Average speed about 30 miles an hour. Uh, also delays 64 eastbound between Limburg and McCausland. Your point forecast clear and cold this morning, then warmer throughout the day. High of 68 right now. It's 32 at the Point Studio. Ladies and gentlemen. What a day, huh, guys? What a I mean, day. We what had, a day. We had Ozzy, Oz, Oz, Ozzy, Ozzy Osbourne. Ozzy Osbourne was here. Yeah. No. We talked about Ozzy Osbourne, <laughs> but we had Ozzy Smith in here. A lot of osmosis. Mm -hmm. And now we got Courtney Diamond here. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. Hi. Oh, my God. Ozzy Smith was your opener today. How oh, my that yeah. gosh. Yeah, yeah, oh my, you guys, yeah I know Smith I'm no Ozzy Smith, but thank you so much for having Zero me Zero time gold glove winner, Courtney Diamond. Hey! Yeah. Yeah. How many All-Star games have you been at? <laughs> yeah. Exactly zero. Zero. But. <laughs> Not bad. You got something on Ozzy. I mean, he'll never have. You were our old intern, so. That's right. He will never be. Aww. He will never be the eighth Rich Show uh, uh, intern. Mm -hmm. Never. And I want to see Ozzy Smith sing Taylor Swift songs. Right? I would okay. love to see it. Doing I'd back love to flips. see it. I can't do the backflips, though. But congratulations on this uh, TaylorMade thing you're doing. Thank it's, you very it's, much. It's amazing. So see Courtney and her Taylor Swift experience okay. at Del Mar Hall on March 30th. Right? You're calling it a Taylor Swift experience. Yes, we are TaylorMade, a tribute to Taylor Swift. So yes. cool. I've seen it. I went to the uh, Wild. I've seen it. You sure seen did. It. And I, I don't, it was like maybe the second show at it the was, Wild. It was, yes. And to watch these little people, these little girls mainly, yep. run to the front of the stage. They're all decked out in their eras mm -hmm. where they, everybody looks like Taylor Swift. Parents, like I, t plenty of dads yep. taking their daughters. Everybody had such a great time. It like lit my, my heart up for you because of what you're doing. Yeah. Yeah. It is, um, Definitely not something that I take for granted. And I just, after every show during the meet and greet or the next day when I'm like recapping what I did, I'm just like, how did this happen yeah. to me? Yeah, that wild, yeah. right? Yeah. It That's really awesome. is. It's it's a really beautiful thing. I'm so very there are not many tickets left for March 30th. No, we are, we are down to, I believe, less than 40 tickets. Man. And I saw the promo video you guys have out and there's so many like little kids there and it could be their first concert experience i know like going to moon's punk rock machine shows mm -hmm. and seeing kids for the first time walk into a concert hall yes mm -hmm. so cool it is so cool it is so cool i get a lot of people saying this is my daughter's first concert you know or whatever and like what an honor and yeah. responsibility yeah, to be is. someone's first introduction to live music yeah that is such a big deal what does it look like from your perspective of this stage looking at these little kids and, and adults too? There's plenty of adults there. Yes, too. there's a lot of adults in the pit too, but um, it's just, it's really impossible to describe. And I know that that sounds really cheesy, but the very first show that we did um, was at the Wiley Theater. That was July 27th of last year. And I just remember feeling so excited, but also so much pressure to deliver. Nervous. Yes. I mean, we sold out that show in less than two days. Not having been an established band, yeah. not, nobody knew anything about us. It was just the fact that it was related to Taylor Swift that we sold it out. And I just remember feeling so much pressure. And 
I was like kind of freaking out backstage and getting ready to go on for the intro and our intro video started and just the most deafening screams you have ever <clears throat> all to hear heard. you sing. Correct. And I was like, these people don't even know me. What if I suck? <laughs> like, yeah. What what if I go out there Good and they're like, didn't suck. Thank you. Yes. Good thing I didn't. But it was like as soon as I heard those screams, I was like, OK, this is a safe space. And I just went out there, and then the first time I was handed a friendship bracelet, I, I almost started sobbing. I just didn't expect it. And we know it. you are a crier. You she know is. what? I don't want to talk cry. about it. Hey, and speaking <laughs> of which, time. I have <laughs> one for all of you. Oh, I love this. I haven't, I've never been given a Taylor Swift Ooh, bracelet. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. Thank you. I got a, oh Ozzy Ooh. Smith hugged me, and I got this a tailor-made friendship bracelet. We're having a, like a heart day today. My colors. It's I'll put it with the rest of them. Heart yeah. hands. Come on now. <laughs> Wait, guys, when we take a picture, can we do heart hands in the picture? Oh, yeah, we'll make Riz do that. Oh, my God. This is what we're doing. that. I love doing that. <laughs> he says hi Scott ah. by the way oh, I didn't get to see you I yet. love doing hard hands <laughs> that is so awesome though like and, and, and you're right there is a ton of pressure on you but you delivered like I mean I've heard dozens and dozens of reviews about how great this show yeah. is mm -hmm. it's, that's, that's really sweet is it weird to see me in the pit with all those little girls at every show <laughs> you know Rafe uh, it was unexpected yeah, yeah he's, he's down there doing the lawnmower he's yeah, doing, picking he's up change doing yeah, the lawnmower. This, is not a, this is not a Pantera shake, mosh shake, pit shake 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 Absolutely. shake I'm in pushing little girls time. down to get to the front <laughs> yeah, I know her <laughs> the first time I saw you like do the so one of the things that a lot of people do is they the start half. they start the half heart and they expect me to come over and complete it and that completes my heart just oh. to be honest mm -hmm. but when Rafe did that I mean it was just a whole nother level yeah you are a Swifty through and through he really yeah, man. is you really were there Swifty. on the pit I'm a Swifty <laughs> he's a Swifty <laughs> what <laughs> He no, doesn't put the T on Taylor, Taylor Swift. Swift. He says Taylor, Taylor Swift. Yeah. Taylor Swift. Oh, that takes too that's, long. That's incorrect. Have you seen oh. Taylor? Did you go? Yes. I went to the Reputation Tour in 2018, and yeah. then I went to the Eras Tour in Kansas City the day she dropped Speak Now, Taylor's version. So we got a four-hour show, baby, How instead like of that? three and a half uh, hours. And to buy two tickets, you're now living in a van. Yeah. yeah. Well, no, <laughs> that's, that's what you uh, got to do. That's all thanks to my uh, incredible stepmom. That was a Christmas present to oh, me and my nice. sister, who is uh, also in the she's van. She's now living in a van. Yeah, I think it's so cool that your sister's out there with you. And she's incredible, too. She is so incredible. I'm obsessed How much older are you than her? Ten years. Okay, yeah. And to see the sisterhood on stage is the next level thing. I mean, Taylor Swift doesn't have that. She's out there by herself. She's just vibing with her backup dancers. And, you know, mm -hmm. me and Holland just doing our thing, you know. And your band's incredible. Yes, they are Listen, all Listen, Taylor incredible. Swift's got this. I talked about this yesterday. she got this racket thing going on with everything coming out twice. Just oh, yeah. Calling explain a Taylor, it to Riz. Just calling it Taylor's version. Can you swift explain this so to Riz? Could, so she could sell things twice. I, listen, Damn. I love it. Brilliant. I get it. It's Look. brilliant. Like that that uh, thing on Disney, Taylor oh, yeah, Swift, yeah, yeah. Eras, Eras concert video, yeah. Taylor's version. Yeah, I was what the hell is that about? I have to be honest that I was confused by that as well. I was like, what makes this? And it's really just the fact that they added the four surprise acoustic songs to the end. Now with three extra minutes. Oh. They just put, they just, listen, they just put slap Taylor's version on whatever and she gets to sell it twice. Yeah. Brilliant. She is a brilliant businesswoman. Yeah. Not taking a anything away from brilliant that. brilliant businesswoman. And my jealousy is ugly. It is. <laughs> I want to date but Travis Kelsey. Just. Now, with three extra songs and one fewer bank account that it's going to. Riz Show <laughs> podcast, Riz version. Three extra complaints at the end. <laughs> <laughs> three in memoriams. <laughs> no, my daughter, my daughter watched, uh, you know, the, uh, the, the new one on... Uh, Amazon Prime. Uh, Saturday night or Friday night or one of those nights. Uh, whatever night it came out. Yes. And I go, what was the difference? She goes, eh, hmm. another couple songs. I go, ah, damn. She does Tales it again. version. Gotcha. You watch the first one. <laughs> gotcha. And you watch the second one, and the second one was the same as the first one, mm -hmm. except with a couple extra songs on there. How mad are she you? Gotcha. Oh, cool. She got gotcha. you. She got gotcha. you. Yeah. Well, did you lose it when you saw Taylor? I feel like as emotional as you are and how much you have studied this catalog of music, what did you feel like? Do you see yourself as a fan, the little girls that are seeing you? Yes. Yeah. Yes. I, I, at the Reputation Tour in 2018, I went with my stepmom and my sister, and I, d I had been waiting to see Taylor Swift for so long. I mean, I've been a fan since she released Tim McGraw, right? So... She's been like my compass for such a big part of my life. And so when I finally saw her in 2018, she did her little ready for it intro, which became our intro, by the way, mm. when we first became a Are band. You ready for it? That's exactly oh, I know that it. Song. Thank okay. you. Yes, that was. I'm a Swiffy. <laughs> I know you are. I'm a Swiffer. I'm a Swiffer. We're a bunch of Swiffers in here. For the love of God. A storm.
<laughs> when she came out and did the, are you ready for it? I, I think I fell to the ground. Yeah. I didn't even know what to do. <laughs> and then that happened at the Eras tour when the clock came out and like it, I, I don't have any words. See, I really did don't. Did you see the video? It's making the rounds of three, uh, three girls at a Taylor Swift show. <laughs> they look to be like in their late teens uh -huh. and they're playing a song and one woman is sobbing uncontrollably. Have you never cried at a show? Right. Look me in the face. Honestly. You've never cried at a tool show? He cries in the parking lot when he can't find his space. Yeah. Yeah. I have been moved to tears, tears <laughs> multiple times. Like, I mean, Jeff Lynn just got announced yesterday. I wouldn't want I anybody to know. I wouldn't put it online. Well, my, my eyes were most moistened at yeah. uh, Garth Brooks. Well, you don't what cry. Is, and that's, a, that's a lot for you, actually. Yeah, yeah, Why yeah, wouldn't yeah. you want to put it online? Why wouldn't you want to share that something means too proud. so much to you? I'm a proud Proud and brings man. you so much joy. Why wouldn't you want to share that with the world? I will Isn't let that, are you an ugly know. crier? Is that it? I'm an ugly crier, I and will, I don't care. I will come on the air the next day and said and say I was moved by that. Okay, that's okay. your way. You don't need right. to see. Something's got to be private. <laughs> okay, I'm private. <laughs> I'm private. Well, I love it. Well, I'm I think that's and great. listen, I'm very happy for you. Thank and it's you. March 30th at the Del Mar Hall. Yes, Taylor made. Get your tickets while you can. Sell it out. Oh, it's gonna. Sell We're out. selling it out. That is. It'll the be sold out by later today. If it's Riz, not already. Riz decrees. <laughs> it must be sold out by later I declare. Today. Scott says he will buy the rest of the tickets. That's right. Mm -hmm. If it's not sold out. That's Riz, correct. your daughter is a, is a Swifty, as you call it. Yes. Oh, you bringing her? Uh, How she's about a, that? She's a real Swifty. We're Swiffers. Like, Swifties love it. Swiffers get it. <laughs> Mm -hmm. We get it. March 30th. Do you I any... love the girl, you know? I feel like she needs March to be 30th. there. I think she needs to be yeah, there, Yeah, take her. In the pit. Yeah. Listen. If we make it back in time, I'm bringing my daughter. She's a, we have an event. I would she went to Kansas City. She we was, have an event that, right that night. We do. But I will tell the wife to bring her. Oh. I would love what to day? see Amelia. March 30th. Boom. We're out somewhere. As long as she gets backstage passes. Oh. I got you. <sighs> we do a meet and greet after every show. As oh, well. man. Wow. They're about an hour long. And afterwards, I don't know what to do with myself. Because I'm like, how did people just stand in line for an hour to meet me and my sister and that's have so us that's sign amazing. stuff. It's that's ridiculous. So cool you, that's <laughs> awesome. All right, so listen, Courtney's here. Yeah. We got to get some emails and then we're going to play a contest it. with you. Okay. Miss Taylor Swift fan over here. We'll see how big of a fan you are. All right. Challenge accepted. Yeah. You have no choice. Uh, <laughs> Moon, emails. Emails brought to you by Kloss Furniture. Lowest prices guaranteed. <laughs> we have something for everybody. We got a lot to catch up on. Okay, so we'll start with this one. Hey, y'all. Hey. I've hey, been um, a fire and theft auto adjuster for over a decade and two with two major insurance companies. You can leave your car running with the doors open and flashing signs says, hey, steal this car and it will be covered under a comprehensive loss. Thank you for answering. There's no duty to mitigate a potential loss in the standard Missouri auto contract. Remember we were asking. Yeah. Like if, if you don't lock your doors. Is that on you? If you if, is that on you? Will insurance you your, cover it? Yeah, if you leave your car running and somebody steals it, can you claim it on insurance? Adjust? Okay, so this guy's saying I could leave a sign that says steal my car hey, and insurance will still cover it. Yes. Hey, steal this car in all caps. I don't know. Well, he's insurance. He's I, an insurance guy. That's what he says. I'm not checking on him. No, I know. But if I told Tracy Bibb, I go, oh, my God, Tracy, somebody stole my car. Okay, let's start the claims process. Where was it? Well, it was out, you know, in a pretty bad area. And I left a sign on the car that says... <laughs> Take it, please. The keys are in the ignition. She goes, we're going to cover that. <laughs> will she? <laughs> I, I, I guess so. Well, Tracy will say, what are you, an idiot? Yeah. But then, you know. But see, somebody could put a sign on your car like that. True. What does that change? You see, know what I'm yeah, Just like the tattoo, do not resuscitate. That's, that's not that a contract. doesn't mean anything. All right, so if yeah. he says so, I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't, okay. Okay. Next. Morning, Riz Show. I was on Moon's fly, flight last week from Philadelphia to St. Louis. I didn't say anything to Moon as I know he doesn't like to talk on a plane. When I saw that somebody was sitting in Moon's seat, I waited for Moon to say, come on, man, <laughs> <laughs> which I did not. I did to myself. Um, I don't know if I was more excited to see Moon or Mallory or if Moon was going to talk about it on the show. And I was like, I was there. I was also listening to the podcast on the way home, but didn't tap Moon on the shoulder to tell him I was listening. Enjoy the show. Three out of five stars. Mandy, I just want to say, hey, if I'm on a plane, say hi, right? We're all say hi, people. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Please, because I, then I have something to talk to you about. It's the Not strangers that I that, that just want to have conversations about nothing that I don't want to talk. I to. want to know where my allies are. Yeah, on the plane. So yeah. This I'm thing down. goes down. Who am I looking at? Yeah, I like a oh, high. No. They were referencing. I had someone on a flight. You were gone when I was coming back from Denver, mid-flight. Come up and tap me on the shoulder while I was sleeping. He goes, "I'm listening to you right now." Oh yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's all. And I was like, "Cool, man." 
Thank you. I'm watching you right now. Appreciate no, and, it. And what if they didn't have any earbuds on? Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, was, yeah. that was the weirdest part. <laughs> I, I had this Wear your headphones. Right. He came from under my seat. <laughs> <laughs> Wear your headphones, buddy. I don't need headphones. I had this situation. Like, Damn, dude. I had the situation where me. I was boarding class nine or whatever it was. And there was, so like, people have now been seated for a while. We're like the last pile of people in. And we're, they're, you know, you're trying to get moving. So you're already looking to try to put something uh, up in the bins and, and just get in your seat. And I look down and the guy's in my seat. And and you ha you have that moment where you're like, oh, do we just split up? And I sit where this guy was supposed to was sit. Was it open seating? No, it wasn't. It, I he, I'm in B, and he was supposed to be in E. He was on the wrong side. You so know you what I'm saying? Move. I did. I'm just saying. At the, it's it comes to one of those moments where you look and you go, oh, now I gotta hold up the line and be like, hey, brother. Check your stub, brother. It's I'm sure you're over there. Come on, man. So it was a come on, man moment. So I probably made it. Get the hell out of my seat. I probably made a come on, man face. Uh, next. Uh, when I was in college in da Dallas, I used to take the mega bus from here to there. Remember, we were talking about this Dang. not too long. Didn't realize it was still in service. 14-hour overnight adventure with a few stops. One of those stops was an hour and a half layover, layover in Memphis where they basically kick you off, and then you just sit there and wait to be picked up. To put it in context, you, you know how when you have to have a layover uh, while flying, you go, well, gosh, this sure is inconvenient. What's a lot more inconvenient is a layover in a secured air airport with bars and restaurants everywhere. A layover at a bus stop in downtown Memphis at 3 in the morning, quite scary. Side note, <laughs> yeah. the only place I've witnessed somebody actively using illicit intravenous narcotics oh, right wow. in front of me. Well, and that's oh. what—that's the price of Megabus. <laughs> yeah, you want to go from St. Louis to yeah, Minneapolis dude. for a dollar? Yeah, you want to, you got it. Megabus. That's called <laughs> Megabus first class. <laughs> That's a mega bus uh, business class right there. Mm -hmm. When you get intravenous they drug use at 3 a.m. <laughs> yeah, who's got a tougher job? And I, and I, I'm getting to be more on Rafe's side here. Thank you. You know, a south, a Southwest pilot Ooh. or a mega bus driver? Yeah, mega well, bus. Well, think driver. about the pilots that they have to press their uniforms. Right. It all so gives me thing. anxiety. That's all I got for you. That all gives me anxiety. You ever been on a, a long distance a bus trip? Uh, yes, to Washington D.C. But with like, like a, a church group or like, something, right? Uh, I was on a charter bus. Okay. I'm talking like a Greyhound. No, I've never been on a Greyhound. I'm glad you I'm survived. Sorry. I did survive. I never have either. Glad. I know. Yeah, I it was so a rough either. trip. I'm I'm sure. go on a trip. I, I cried a lot. I feel like it's something I should experience. Let's do it. I've never been train? on one. You ever done the train? Uh-huh. I've done yeah, Amtrak. Amtrak. Yeah, Train's yeah, fine. Yeah, taking the train up to Chicago a couple times. Yeah, train, you still kind of feel like it's private in some weird way. A little bit. You can move around and go. There's a dining car. Right. I love a train. You can stand on Love top running of a train. You know oh, what I'm hey, hey, oh, hey, 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 hey. Me too. Inappropriate. Hey, hey. I'm sorry. Come on, Courtney's here. Oh, trains are nice because right. the seats on. can face each other and you can play cards. Yeah. Yeah, yeah the yeah, train's yeah. fine. That's I've, I've, I've never been on a Greyhound. Do Greyhounds have bathrooms on them? Some. Sometimes. Yeah, any seat. Where yeah, else sometimes it's a little stand up thing in the back corner. I'm pro bathroom on board, right? Some people are against it because it smells. No, no I need pooping. to have. What are you supposed to? Do? Yeah, exactly. you have to have a bathroom. No I don't like no being products. under the schedule of the majority. On the mega bus, the handy Gatorade bottle. <laughs> yeah. if they didn't put it's a, a bathroom bottle. If they didn't put a bathroom on the mega bus, it's going to be a bathroom anyway. Yeah, it's a snapple. <laughs> So that wasn't really that wasn't an upgrade is. as much as a defense mechanism on no, Megabus. The, Moon's right. The driver hands you a Snapple bottle. Yeah. Just yeah. go, man. <laughs> Here you go. There's a peach Snapple for me. Brett Michaels. Oh, no Brett Michaels mango Snapple, sugar-free Snapple. <laughs> Look under the cap. It says you won something in 2001. Yeah, cool. Made of the best blend Next. on earth. Hello, everybody. Hi. Hello. Back in October, my family and I went to Stiefel to see St. Louis Symphony perform the score for The Nightmare Before Christmas while the movie played. We've done this before with other movies and always had a good time. Me, my wife, seven-year-old daughter, 10-year-old son just had our seats, and we were waiting for the show to start. I was in the aisle seat with my daughter next to me. My daughter looks towards the aisle and says, Look, Dad. I look to my left, and there's a dog right next to me. My daughter loves animals, so I let the dog sniff my hand. I gave a little scratch on the top of the head. The lady then screams, Sir, don't touch my service dog! Oh. Uh, I was caught off guard, and uh, she had a pretty rude tone when she said it. I didn't know really what to do or Usually say. Usually, those service dogs, when you see them out and about, you're not supposed to touch them. Yeah. Right. It says a vest that says, do not touch. I sure. quickly retorted with, you're pretty rude. She then proceeds to tell me why I'm an a-hole with oh. my children sitting there. Then the person she's with goes on to tell me that touching a service dog is a federal offense! Oh. Exclamation point. I is told, it? I told myself to I, not I let it bother I don't me. I buy that. 
because it, it would ruin my symphony experience. Still trying to figure out, am I the a-hole here? A federal offense. Whoa. I did some digging. Uh -huh. I cannot find anything about touching a service dog being a federal offense. Maybe a no, uh, yeah, maybe a no-no, but nothing further. And to top it off, the lady sang every freaking song during the performance, ruining it for my son. Thanks for reading, loyal listener well, Nate. There was no vest. I mean, it was dark, so maybe they <clears throat> didn't see the vest. Oh, okay. Oh. Well, first of all, don't, don't you assume I'm, that anybody who has a dog, it's a service dog I'm, I'm in also, a situation like yeah, that? I'm also not going up and just petting random dogs. No, I mean, well, I am, what? but not. Sir, I'm trying without to asking. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. sure, sure, what? Sure, <laughs> without <laughs> asking. <laughs> yeah, but if a dog, if your service dog has approached me and my family, it's probably not a well-trained service dog. It's probably a dog you brought. Mm. Is that what she said, though? Like, uh, And if a dog approaches me... The and dog approach it, them or... You don't get it. it sit sounds next like to him. that. Sit next to him. Dog didn't yeah, approach nobody. I get it. I mean, I brought this point up before. I think we've... Uh, We've expanded the umbrella of what constitutes a service dog in this country, and I'm okay with it. But at the same time, like, is this a bomb sniffing dog we're talking about here? Is this a I get nervous uh, in an elevator dog? Because I, I don't think they need as much uh, uh, federal protection as a bomb sniffing dog. Well, there's or the an PTSD dog. dogs, you know, yeah, we've seen over at Scott Air Force Base. Yeah, if it's but, a, if but, it's, a, but they know, but but they know. They know that it's a dog, and they know that humans like dogs. You know, we have this like have some self control. You don't have to pet everything. To totally, That's but, at the, but yeah. at the same time, <laughs> I, I have I have seen people with with Put your dogs hands in your pockets. politely say, "Oh, please don't touch. He's a service right. dog. Sure. You really don't touch." Like, there's an easy way to handle that sure. when people, yeah. and you got to know that if you have a service dog, people are going to be. Yeah, you don't have to be a bitch about it. Yeah, people are going to not know. They're going to be ignorant to the to, sure. the to the courtesies, and they're gonna they're gonna go for it. And you, I'm sure most. Most of those guys and gals are used to politely saying, please don't touch my service dog. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's all you got to do. Right. Yeah, that's all you got to do. Yeah, you, don't, you don't have to be a jerk about it. I saw a police dog at the West County Mall last week, mm. and she was glorious, and I wanted I to pet know. her so bad, and I didn't, you know. I, know. Mm -hmm. I get so sad. Quite smart. I want to pet all the dogs, but I refrain. Hanging out with the squares. Now, yes. You'd be the, partying with me, getting your belly rubbed. If the dog coke. approaches you, yes, we're pet, <laughs> petting away. But if the dog's sitting there... What about this? Also, you probably don't... I don't know what kind of dog it was. You know what I mean? Like, if I get approached by, like, a googly-eyed... Pomeranian. Uh, yeah. And I'm like, I'm probably not assuming that that's on... That dog's on the force. You know what I mean? I'm probably like, oh, someone brought their dog. Like, but that's a certain... I'm a service dog. <laughs> I'm like, okay, well, what service are you in? <laughs> you know, Coast Guard? I don't know. I was at the parade on Sunday in Dogtown, and this couple walked by, and they were holding a six-week-old Cocker Spaniel, Give the cutest. And they walk by, and I'm like, oh, my God. Like, my stupid voice starts, oh, my God. And they're, like, kind of turned the dog towards me, and I was petting it. And then I did something that is rude, and I felt immediately bad after. I gave the dog a kiss on its head, <laughs> oh, <laughs> which is too nice. far. But, man, this dog was so freaking cute. I just, I, I, I was overwhelmed. I was overwhelmed with how adorable this thing was. We had was. a Cocker Spaniel growing up. That dog hated everybody. Cocker Spaniels are garbage. Why was that oh. too far? Oh. That no. dog, well, that puppies dog. Puppies are puppies, but when that thing's an adult, everybody. Wow. Screw that bit dog. Every one of my, that dog bit every one of my friends. Oh, this dog was <laughs> so the dumbest. cute. So I felt bad. I was like, ooh, I shouldn't have put my mouth on this dog's hey, forehead. You, I don't know. Hey, we had a cockapoo, that though. That Bichon. thing lives to 23. So. Bichons could go to hell, too. What? I knew it was we, coming. We don't care the hate that we're going to get. Coming. You scared that? You frightened that thing? It pees all over the floor. Don't look at it. Don't look at all it. Right. Yeah, you want a good service dog? Get a cocker spaniel. Nobody wants a pet uh, anyway. Another one, Moon. <laughs> uh, let's see. Hey, everybody. Just wanted to ask again. Um... Maybe you're wishing Moon a happy birthday. Oh, that's tomorrow. Uh, but maybe you could throw out one for my husband. It's a shout out to Charlie. Oh no, we don't. We don't do that. No. Sorry, Charlie. Birthday. When's his birthday? Tomorrow. I don't. I don't know. Delete. They didn't put that. <laughs> hey, everybody in King Scott. Hey. I live on the second floor of my apartment building. When I got off work this morning at 6 a.m., I go to walk up the steps to my door and I find a guy sleeping outside. I tell him hi and I ask if he's okay and if there's anything he needs. He says he just needs a ride home. It's only about 10 or 15 minutes away. I felt very uncertain of it because of all the dangers that could arise. But I also felt like it would be the nice human thing to do, to give him a ride. Are you out of your mind? <laughs> he didn't seem like a threat. 
He's probably in his 20s. I end up saying no, and I offered a blanket and a pillow instead. My question is, am I an a-hole for no, not giving no, him a ride? No, no, Or no. did I do the right thing, Riz Show style? You did the, you did yeah. the right thing. Just go pet him and <laughs> drive off. Can you give me a ride somewhere? No. No, no. thank you. Remember the guy that escaped the um, the hospital? Right. He's still on the loose. That's no, right. no. Somebody gave him a ride. Yeah, remember? He, went to the, he hit the, the sewer. Guy? Yeah. Wait, and he then did? he went to the gas station they across the, the gas street, station. and somebody gave him a ride. Yep. We didn't get... I didn't get this update. The oh, guy yeah, no, who no, it had happened broken the next, out... They figured it out the next day. Oh, well, I didn't listen, I guess. I don't remember the guards know. fell asleep? Yes. <laughs> he escaped. <laughs> hey, it happens. <laughs> the guy escaped. He hit out, and then he went to the gas station across <laughs> the street. Somebody gave him a ride. Hmm. While a manhunt was happening. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not saying this guy's a felon or, you know, is wanted, but... <clears throat> you never Random know. guy hiding in a stairwell? Check the news. Can I get a ride? Get the hell out of here. Get the f*** out of here, man. Seriously, minutes. get out. Where did he want a ride to? Home. He said he needed a ride home 10 to 15 minutes away. Looked, uh, he said he looked at... He was in his 20s and did not look like a threat. Hmm. That's how they get you. Uh. <laughs> Jeffrey Dahmer was a nice-looking guy. He was. That's right. Yeah. Said that he wasn't a threat. <laughs> <laughs> All right, one more. Hey, fellas, and Big Terry. Hey, was, uh, hey, you want it? You got it. <laughs> oh, um, my God, what an honor. <laughs> I'm behind on the podcast. Uh, I just got back from vacation. I'm listening to the segment, segment of things that could never happen in school now, and I'm pretty sure I have you all beat. My third-grade teacher told my parents and me, that I should save all my future teacher's time and just drop out of school. Back to you. Love the show. Team so your teacher told you to drop out? <laughs> it's third grade. Oh. <laughs> you learned everything already? <laughs> that is so, not, so messed up. Didn't just tell him. Told his parents to How save. How bad were you at times, students? <laughs> <laughs> to save his future teacher's time. Just give up. Hey, just so you know, Paul wrote one of the better written emails that we usually get. So I'm glad you stayed in school or dropped out in third grade. I'm not sure what you did, but it all. Well, I imagine all having that parent-teacher conference like, hey, listen, uh, we believe Thatcher shouldn't. <laughs> he should go right to work. Mm -hmm. listen. Uh, school is not his thing. He's in the third grade. <laughs> School's nobody's thing in third grade. <laughs> listen, well, how many times was he in third grade? Let's find something for Paul to do because school ain't it. That's pretty bold. I honestly someone. appreciate the teacher's honesty. Because yeah. that kid is probably rotten. But Paul's probably rotten. But what makes, what gives them the, the authority to decide what that kid is capable of? Okay, but you're a third, you're, okay, you're an elementary school teacher. Sure. Usually teachers uh, of kids that age are so passionate about, like, wanting to teach kids and they love kids. Mm -hmm. Paul must have been so friggin' rotten. Mm. And he must have sucked so bad in school. <laughs> And been such a distraction that this teacher's like, I can't. Yeah, to, to, I can't. To heck with it. And, I'm just and I tell don't his even parents. want. And I, in good conscience, can't move him to another class. He's that much of a jerk. Oh my gosh! Imagine how that how to drive a teacher to say to a third grader, "School's not for you." Just give up now. Uh, yeah, I witnessed some teachers. kids just are terrible. You know, that's the uh, fear. I know. If you're like, if you're not very good at, uh, at, you know, especially elementary school, you're not very good, and you're like, your, your grades are terrible. Like, the, what's the big fear? Being held back, right? Oh yeah. But there's like a there's like a zone because teachers have to like care about you enough to hold you back because there are plenty of kids that should have been held back statistically speaking Stay that they're back. like, get them out of here, get them out of here, pass them on. Yeah, like they don't care enough about you, and you're that much of a troublemaker where they're like, you're gonna be somebody else's you problem can, now. You could flunk twice over, and you are moving on to the next grade because we don't want to see you again. Yeah, <laughs> that's so true. Yeah, yeah. There's I, like I, there's like I, a zone. My hands are up. I can't. You're done. If you I got you to get away from me. Yeah. If you were held back, it's because they actually cared about you. If you were a terrible student and you kept on passing, it's because they didn't care about you. Yeah. <laughs> they wanted you out. All right. Listen, we got to take a break. Thank you for your emails. Rich Show at 1057thepoint.com. Courtney's here. Make sure you see TaylorMade. Get your tickets while you can. It is uh, March 30th, Del Mar Hall. Low ticket alert, guys. Low ticket alert. Low ticket alert. Mm -hmm. Bring the kids. A first time concert. They're going to love it if they're Taylor Swift fans. You want to be parent of the year? Shh. Take right? your kid to this. If you didn't get them tickets to the Eras Tour, this is just as good. Yeah. Just as good. Sell tickets. <laughs> No tickets. <laughs> Support local. S Support local. All right, so we're going to play a game after the uh, after the break. Okay. 
Okay. Mm-hmm. The game is called. This went well last time. Taylor or AI. All right. You're gonna you're gonna rock this. All right. So Rafe uh, went to the old AI machine. Right. Mm-hmm. And he said, "Write me a Taylor Swift song." Okay. So what we have here is we have some real lyrics and some fake lyrics. Okay. You will have to tell us if it's a real or fake Taylor Swift song. All right. We have 15. Okay. I will allow you to get one incorrect. <gasps> or what? Or nobody gets any tickets. What? what? Yeah. Show's canceled. He doesn't mean it. He My show is canceled. That's right. <laughs> We actually have. All right, fine. We'll see. Out of 15, how many will will Courtney get right? Okay. Okay. I was going to say, I was going to put everybody on the line. Mm, Listen. Like, if you don't get get at least 14 right, nobody gets anything. Here's what I'll say. I think I'm going to be really good at this game. Of course you can. You sing Taylor Swift songs. Correct. And I am a diehard Taylor Swift fan. But I'm worried that you're going to select one of the five songs that I consider skips. Be confident. Be confident. Don't let this man. There may be some skips on here. Don't let this happen. He doesn't know which ones are skips. You're yeah. going to be great. You're going to be great. We take some callers. We let them choose. And if she gets 14 or more out of 15, everybody gets all tickets. And you get shot with the airsoft gun. No, no, we're not. Oh. No, oh, the wow. airsoft gun is not Me? in this. No, hell. Oh. Sudden, was, everyone you get wrong, no. Courtney gets shot with the airsoft no. gun. Yeah. Uh-huh. You want me to put some tailor-made tickets on the line, too? Yes. Sure. Yeah, I'll put my butt on the line for you. No, you. no, nobody's getting shot. <laughs> not today. Okay, man, I'm just trying to spice it up here. Fly guy really wants us to get the Taylor's gun Taylor's version. <laughs> Airsoft gun, Taylor's version. I'll throw in two tickets. Okay, to the winner. You want to just do like, out of ha- out of 15, how many will Courtney get right? Okay. I'll we'll make it, we'll make it simple, Rafe. Add a, and she's going to do well. We can have duplicates too. Just get them on the phone. 314-624-3833, 618-398-3833. Taylor Swift or AI, next. All right, 857, Tuesday, traffic and weather, moon coming at you. Traffic is brought to you by Worldwide Technology Raceway. The biggest race of 2024 is Sunday, June 2nd. Time to lock in your NASCAR Cup Series tickets now at www.raceway.com. Uh, severe delay is 270 westbound between Dunn and Dunn. Your point forecast, clear and cold okay. this morning, then warmer throughout the day. High of 68, <laughs> right now it's 34 at Point Studio. I'm just reading what it says. All right, welcome back to the program. Uh, Courtney Diamond is here. Hi. Taylor Made is the Taylor Swift experience. Yes. Delmar Hall, March 30th. Very low ticket alert. Good In- luck. Incredibly low. Good, good luck. luck. Let's good just luck say good tickets. luck. Yeah. Good luck. And thank you to everybody who bought tickets. I mean, it's not an official, official sellout, but it's it's waiting on word. So yes. hop on to the, to the Delmar Hall website and see if you can grab yourself at least one ticket. If, if you can. Congratulations. That's- Thank you. Thank you very much. And thank you to all the staff at Delmar Hall, as well as our booking agent, Al Canal, and the amazing Pat Hagen for, for booking us at Delmar Hall. I can't believe we're about to sell out Delmar right. Hall. That's so Not cool. official yet. Wow. I don't want to do. say officially. Wild. But- Congrats. No, I said about to. Thank you. you get that wrist show kiss, you know? <laughs> I appreciate it, you guys. Thank you very much for no, allowing you know, me to Swiffer come in. kiss, dude. Yeah, Swiffer, Swiffer kiss. Swiffer kiss. Mm-hmm. No, you're the best. She swiffered that game, swept hard. Mm-hmm. Swept hard. <laughs> yeah. Swift swept. Uh, you know, mid-March seems like a random time for this, but the website Mental Floss just posted a list of things turning 50 this year. Mm-hmm. And there are some big ones, some big things turning 50 this year. So if you were born in 1974, here are 10 random things that are as old as you are. Post-it notes. Happy birthday, post-it notes. I invented post-it notes. 50 them. years old today. I used one of or those Not today, today, but this year. So a guy accidentally invented a weak glue back in 1968, but didn't know what to do with it. Six years later, another guy wanted to buy, uh, wanted a way to, to bookmark pages in his hymnal book at church. Post-it notes were born. Yeah, and then they went to a high school reunion. Yep, that was, and, uh, they lied about he dated that, Romy. Yeah. <laughs> they lied yeah. about that. <laughs> Anybody needs to make a call, I got a phone. Uh, the Rubik's Cube invented in 1974 by a Hungarian guy named... Rubik. Erno Rubik, yes. He originally called them. Cube. That's right, cubes. Magic, cubes. magic cubes. Mm. My son oh. um, last year got, or maybe it was two years ago, got really into it and started doing the speed cube. That kid, I've never completed one of those things in my entire life. He can do it in under two minutes. Wow. 
Just brrr. My son did it once, and he goes, Dad, I did it. I, I didn't believe him. He knows all the algorithms. He's like, oh, you can do this. You can start here. If you start the, you know, like, he knows the whole math behind it, and he can just do it in his sleep without looking at it. That's Speed awesome. cue. That's amazing. Wild. Uh, barcodes invented 50 years ago. A guy from New Jersey, Joe Woodland, came up with the idea, drew it in the sand while vacationing in Florida. The first barcode was scanned on June 26th, 1974, and then completely revolutionized shopping. Yep. Mm -hmm. And he ushered in the end of the age. You know. Yeah. Well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <What>? Umpire? <laughs> Stop on a move. Happen. Conspiracies are fun. Uh, Bailey's Irish Cream. Hit me. This guy got drunk with Ozzy. You know? <laughs> oh, you shouldn't do Conspiracies are fun. Really? Very good. Conspiracies are <laughs> fun. Okay. <laughs> Stupid barcodes. One time, Scott couldn't turn down alcohol is when Ozzy Smith offers it to you, and he's like, yeah, I do it. For the show, I have to do it. Uh, Bailey's Irish Cream turns 50 this year. Uh, Cream-based liqueurs are common now, but it debuted as the first Irish cream on market in 1974. <laughs> the Heimlich Maneuver, 50 years old this year. Dr. Henry Heimlich. I forgot to tell you guys. Described it in an article back in 74. It started as a theory. It turned out it worked pretty well. Before mm -hmm. that, the advice was to smack a choking person on the back over and over again. Seen it firsthand last week. There was a teenage girl, and she was dying. We, we didn't know. She was right around the corner from where we just got, uh, sat down. This is in Punta Cana at the, um, at like the buffet kind of area. Yeah. <clears throat> and we had just been seated. This guy was kind of like making this shuffle, and he, like you could tell he wasn't sure what to do. I'm like, what's going on? We look around the, the, the pole, and one of the workers ran over and full on Heimlich did maneuvered it, huh? this, this young That's gal as she was turning colors. Oh, boy. And, uh, and she, it, it popped up, and she vomited right there, and it was like, Whoa. everybody around was just kind of. Everybody started applauding? No, everybody was just very like sobered out. I figured like, that's oh, an implausible gosh. situation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's not. Absolutely. It's not how you think. It wasn't the scene that you would think in a movie situation like that. It was much more. You know what the feeling was? <laughs> All I'm picturing right now is Mrs. Doubtfire with Pierce Brosnan. Yeah, when yeah, her yeah. Face is coming off. Yeah, and people and people clapping like, "Yay, that's that's so good." No, no this was this is much more like, "Holy crap, we almost, somebody we almost died." We almost saw somebody die. Yeah. And she was sitting there like pretty messed up, and you can see you can see her, her parents were Fear. like. Everybody was just sort of in this shock, sort of stupor. Yeah, like sobering. It was, it was not what you would think it would be. Um, it was, it, and the, honestly, the rest of the hour, everybody in the area was just kind of like, Holy "Hey, crap. guys, chew your food. <laughs> Make sure you chew your food well." Yeah. Well, you know the story behind Dr. Heimlich was before he passed away, uh, he was at a restaurant. And somebody started choking, and Dr. Heimlich got to use the Heimlich maneuver on somebody a couple months before he passed away. Wow. Somebody was choking. And mm. Dr. Heimlich was there. Mm. Is that lore? Look it up. What? Look it up. Look it up. <laughs> if this is, okay, if this is lore, Google will tell us the Look truth. Certainly. Uh, Dungeons and Dragons turns 50 this year. First people to own a copy got their hands on it early 74. Connect Four. A guy named Howard Wexler wanted to create a board game that was played vertically. Milton Bradley ran with it, started selling it in February of 74. Skittles, invented in the UK in 1974, but didn't hit shelves in the US until 79. Uh, yes. Heimlich, a resident of a senior living community in Ohio, said he was sitting next to 87-year-old Patty Riz. Patty Riz? Patty Riz? What? Uh, Get out of here! R-I-S, but still, uh, maybe in the okay. family. Yeah. Patty, Patty Riz, uh, during dinner on Monday when she began to choke on her hamburger, according to Heimlich, he then performed the me maneuver. <laughs> 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 performed, the, performed his maneuver on her and dislodged the piece of meat stuck in her windpipe. Right on. Did he stand up and yell that? Does anyone know the me maneuver? <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't that be great? Yes, I'll do it then. <laughs> Before Heimlich, when you did that, you're just a pervert. Yeah. Yeah, you're just sneaking up behind somebody and kind of humping Thanks, them. Dr. Heimlich. <laughs> Thanks, Dr. Heimlich. Uh, Dayquil invented 50 years ago. Thank God. NyQuil had pharmacies... Uh, <clears throat> Sometime later that day. Eight years earlier. In <laughs> Dayquil landed okay. in 74 and was right, originally nice. called Daycare. And also turning 50, the Meow Mix jingle. 
Meow, 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 meow. That's it. We know what it is. In the uh, commercials, the cats just uh, sing meow over and over again. Well, they had a medicine, they called it daycare. Yeah. Like, that's, like, I can see how that's like a good idea. And then when you f see like a logo for that with something you don't want someone young, you know, oh, downing. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Daycare. Well, that's which came cool. first, daycare as that or daycare as we watch your kids? Probably daycare as we watch your kids. Yeah, mm. I wonder. Yeah, that was daycare was 74. So happy birthday, Dayquil and the Meow Mix jingle and Skittles and Connect Four. And Mallory. Dungeons and Dragons. And Mallory. But and she doesn't no. turn 50. Yeah, she's no, not 50. No, not 50. No. These are everything, everything that turns 50. All right, real quick, let's do some news. Oh, yeah. We're going to do some news. And your news being sponsored by... Energy Stars Heating and Cooling, preferred partner of Ameren, Illinois, to make your home comfortable and affordable. All right, it's happening again, guys. The uh, the Mega Millions is stuffed. So Mega Millions up to $875 million. Tonight's the drawing. If somebody chooses the cash option instead of the annuity, uh, $413.5 million will be yours. Wow. Nobody's won the Mega Millions jackpot since December of 23. So, tonight, Mega Millions drawing. All right, so how many ships does the Irish Navy have? Love this joke. <laughs> <laughs> Seven. <laughs> and they're full of potatoes. No, the Irish Navy, the Irish Naval Service has one active ship. Oh, wow. One. Threatening. It's called the George Bernard Shaw. So, last weekend... There was a call for the Irish Navy to help with a drug bust to intercept the delivery of cocaine off the uh, the coast of Cork in Ireland. The police were working on shutting down a smuggling ring, which allegedly involved waterproof containers filled with tens of millions of dollars of you're, cocaine. You're not going to say. Which not. had been thrown overboard off the coast. I what? I don't know, man. I just feel like something, there's some sort of like, they really messed up. No, no, and this is on brand, I'll be honest with you, for the one naval ship in Ireland's Navy. Mm -hmm. What'd they do? So, so again, the uh, they were trying to bust this ring. Yeah. <clears throat> this past weekend was what? St. Patrick's St. Pa Day. That's the big day. Come on, man. And they showed they up. Were like, they nah. showed up all in No, green. they were like, nah. They let it go? They said, no, we're not helping. It's St. Patrick's Day. We have parades to go to. My people. They're like, nah. <laughs> nah, wait, no time. We, no, they said pass. They said pass. <laughs> this is our holiday. Sorry. Hey, you know, I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> Too busy partying? or Yeah, the George like Bernard Shaw was part of some kind of, you know, St. Patrick's Day festivity, and they passed on the drug bust. <laughs> <laughs> Just let me have Passed it. on the drug bust gig. And instead, the police I, I turned to a team of divers for help. Um... Maybe there there was a better explanation for why the ship couldn't help other than it was they were too busy partying. I don't know. The captain said, "Ah, they're partying, we're partying. <sighs> we'll do it tomorrow." But but some locals are frustrated that the navy has been reduced to just one active ship in recent years, and that it wasn't available to help with a drug smuggling operation. But it's St. Patrick's Day, <laughs> and I wonder why drug smugglers smugglers would bring it in this weekend. I can't figure out why they would plan that. Yeah, now they know. Just do it on a holiday. You got something big to do in those waters? Uh, anybody like to uh, do crafts? Anybody? Uh, yes. Yeah. Oh, I, I know what you're getting ready to oh, say. You know. My mother is going to lose her mind. Is this about Joanne Fabric? Yeah. No. Mom, turn the radio off if you're listening. Michael's hands is going to be upset, too. Wait a second. Are they, are they going to do like a, like a liquid, liquid? Joanne Fabrics, file for Chapter 11. You guys, oh. my mother. Oh. My mother is getting ready. She's entering retirement age, and her, all she's wanted is to quit having a career one day and go be part-time at Joanne Fabrics. All right, I'm talking oh, to you, Jill, no. then. Sad part is they filed the paperwork on a quilt. Oh. <laughs> Usually this news means trouble, sticks. but it sounds like the leaders of Joanne have a plan. So according to sources, the company is expected to emerge from bankruptcy in a month when it will likely reorganize and become privately owned. So oh, she could still do it. Oh, okay. so it's just a restructuring uh, thing. Okay. I, I want all Joanne's the crafters fine. out there this to... This is a move. Oh, I Joanne's love Joanne fine. Fabrics. In the meantime, all of the over 800 locations will remain open and operate as usual. Thank God. Whew. And it's awesome you're going to be a private company. Private. Good for private. you. Private. Oh. Um, not good news for Family Dollar. Family Dollar closing 1,000 stores. Mm. Remember we talked about that story a couple weeks ago? All the right. $40 million fine for the rat-infested warehouses. Mm -hmm. 
Decades high inflation, reduction in government benefits for shoppers and competition from other discount stores. Dollar General closing a thousand family dollar stores. This is devastating because family dollars and dollar generals are in food desert locations. So a lot of oh, people yeah. who live in, you know, poor communities, that's that's where they get their food. And so give to your local food banks if you can, because that are, will help with this. There are 8,000 family dollar locations in the U.S. So, so nearly 600 will close this year. Another 370 will sh close in 2025. Mm. That's unfortunate. Wow. Like, for real. They really are the... They're like the only store in every small town. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's like a Dollar General. Yeah. It's like a Dollar General in the Casey's. And that well, is, the, that is the business district in a lot of these rural areas, and that's it does make it tough for people that can't don't have transportation. Yeah, don't have access to food. I think Dollar General's the reason Family Dollars going bye bye. I thought they were owned no, by, yeah, by the same uh, thing. Dollar, no, dollar, dollar Tree. Tree owns. Dollar Tree owns Family Dollar. Oh, okay. Oh, oh I thought you said Dollar General. I made a mistake. Okay. Okay, so Dollar General. Dollar General, I think it's its own crushing thing. Crushing Family Dollar. Yeah. Dollar Tree owns Family Dollar. Hmm. Well, uh, I was at the Costco on uh, on Saturday. Mm -hmm. Food court was hopping. Yeah. I mean, it was every table was was packed. What do they serve there? Dollar I fifty hot dogs. Oh. <gasps> yeah, yeah. Dollar fifty hot dogs, and I think they sell more pizza than any other pizza joint in America. And their cakes are good. They got what the chicken bakes too. No, no, no. That's the bakery. The bakery is the, the food saying, court. I don't have, a, go I don't have the, a card, we, man. I don't get yeah. to go in there. I only get to what people bring me. Well, you know what? You could go in there okay. and just go to the food court. Yeah. You, you can? can? Not anymore. Oh. That ship is sailed. Oh, what a teasing I just ordered, world. We just ordered our first pizzas from there when we were down in Springfield, and then... Uh, it was pretty tasty. Must first, say, first Costco said they were they were cracking down on non-members sneaking in the shop. Now they're coming for non-members looking for cheap eats. Costco is asking its food court employees to check for membership cards for anyone looking to score items like that dollar fifty hot dog. In fact, there's signs saying effective April eighth, two thousand twenty-four, an active Costco member card will be required to purchase items from the food court. Wow. No more. And if you're caught, oh no, you go to jail. You go to Costco jail. Go into mm -hmm. the wall. <laughs> you just go into the wall. Yeah, we're gonna put you in the drywall. Yep. You don't want that. Mm -mm. You right. live inside the walls of Costco. <laughs> Forever. Scurry around like a little rat you are. <laughs> it's like people under the stairs only Costco. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> rat. You come out at night and gnaw on they a hot dog. They cut your tongue out. People under the shelves. Yeah, people under the yeah. shelves. <laughs> All right, we got to take one final break. We'll come back. We'll wrap her up. What a day, huh? Indeed. I feel like we did two shows today. I know. I think we did. Me too. Uh, first off, a big thanks to our mystery guest, Ozzy Smith. <laughs> Great seeing him. Mm -hmm. Like seeing the look on uh, your guys' faces when he walked in. It was a look of shock. <laughs> and Courtney, you got to meet him too. I know. I know. I know. What <laughs> Dreams a day. Dreams are coming true on this show today. Uh, Courtney and the Taylor made. Taylor Swift experience, March 30th over at Del Mar Hall. Yes. Um, I think they just released a couple tickets. We just released 20 more tickets. 20 more tickets. Good they're luck. not going to last. Good luck. Good luck getting those. Thank you so much again to Pat Hagen and everybody at Del Mar Hall. And thank you guys for well, having me on again. We're very thank proud you. of you. Thank you. Thank you. It's amazing. It's amazing. All right, today's uh, wrap-up sponsored by... Sponsored by Jack in the Box. Jack wraps a little bit of healthy, a little bit of indulgence only at Jack. Uh, what is today's podcast called? King Scott has a great title again for us today. It's Ozzy and the Rizzuto Show, Courtney's Version. Ah. Oh, oh learn, are learn, you learn, serious? Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh, Stop. <laughs> yeah, Learn's idea. We'll fight. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Moon. What Get else? you some Can You Feel the Punk Tonight tickets May 11th, 3 p.m. show and an 8 p.m. show. All your favorite Disney songs, uh, classic, uh, old and new, all punctified. It's an all-ages show, yes? It's a great one to bring the kids to, but if you're a Disney adult or you just like punk rock music and you know all the words to Disney stuff, you will enjoy the show as well. It's made for everybody. Thank you, Moon. Learn. I uh, Just follow Courtney Diamond, Taylor made on all the socials. Sell this thing out for her on the 30th. She's a good girl. What about you? Anything yeah, else? follow us on Instagram at TaylorMadeBand13. Check out our website, TaylorMadeBand.com, and follow me on Instagram at TaylorMadeCourt. Thank you guys again. Rafels. Follow me on Instagram at all t anything that says TaylorMade. 
<laughs> you guys are so uh, cool. at Taylor made golf clubs at Taylor made yeah, yeah, yeah. 314 oh at Taylor made a mistake whatever it is Even just David follow Taylor them all the, uh, target. Target. <laughs> yeah, that's right. yeah. I'll follow uh, follow follow her on all socials Courtney Diamond and then tune in at 11 a.m. Uh, on the YouTube on the point and do a live number two show with me call in at 818-532-1420 that's 818-532-1420 and let's talk about vacations gone awry. We're going to talk. I'm going on a cruise this week for the first time. Learn refuses to go on a cruise. Yeah, he's yeah. trying to get me uh, go. And I'll be honest, I'm on the fence myself. So call, call and talk to me if you've been on a cruise or maybe you've had a different type of vacation go awry, but, but call in today. Scott, I got nothing other than Courtney. Awesome to have you on today. <laughs> and Thank you, Scott. Uh, And Sir Ozzy. Always an I honor. love you, Ozzy Smith. Yes. What a nice guy, huh? The sweetest. Mm -hmm. Thank so you. Sweet. Thank you. I thought Ozzy was nice, too. All right. We'll leave you with a selection from our <laughs> team. Remember the day brought to you by Hot Shots, St. Louis song for Blues Hockey from St. Charles, Missouri.